especially in kind of third urchin. That's huge. It is a pretty big one. I don't see too many of these. No. I th All right, can we get a zoom here? It looks a lot like um, sand, sand dollar. Whoa. Yeah, sand dollars are a, a type of urchin. Oh, okay, I didn't know that. This is our, th I feel like this is the first sea urchin that looks like this that we've come across. Yeah, it certainly on our is. watch. Yeah. Larger. And the spikes aren't really as long. Mm. Anyone ever played Halo? Uh, is I that did, good yeah. for you all? Looks the, like uh, urchin? Covenant yeah. ship. All right, let's come wide. <laughs> Bridge, this is Nev. Not much else to look at. <laughs> two zero meters bearing two four zero. Uh, can we go at speed um, point three knots? What was the depth of the last val sample? Does that is that in your log? Not written. What is What is the strangest thing you have found in the vastness of I the sea floor? I think we're about to start ascending here. Mm. The strangest thing? Strangest mm -hmm. thing. I'll say the headless chicken's my one. That was the strangest thing ever. Nah, yeah, it doesn't say. No. Mm -mm. I thought so too. Those things hey, are Katachi, pretty. Hey, Katachi, could you estimate where we collected the last rock sample? Um, uh, sure. What depth it was? Yeah. Do you need the time? Um, sure, that'll be helpful. Um, between 3.30. Oh, actually, we mark them, so oh, okay. I'll be able to see it. Pee <laughs> Okay. Yeah, that's probably it there. It's uh, sample 166. Bye-bye, fishy. Yeah. Okay, so... Oh, boy, now you got to count. <laughs> Sorry. I'm wondering if it... No, I didn't no, take into account the tell depth. You. Right. No, those are... These are 10-meter increments. Meter, yeah. So we're at a depth... You can, just, uh, you can just guesstimate it. Yeah, 1850, so... So back to the strangest it's not thing. It's 500. I think uh, there's an organism called Xenoturbella, which kind of looks like a discarded sock just on the seafloor. Um, so Xenoturbella it starts with the X. So that's where the Z sound comes from. Uh -huh. If anyone wants to look it up, but they're okay. amongst the weirdest things uh, <laughs> I've seen on the seafloor for sure. I'll spell it out for 15, the 1520 depth. X. Okay. So, okay. So we should probably look for the next one at. T U R. Oh, wait, 15? No, 2520. No. Oh, is it deep? It was deeper. Oh, okay. Well, the difference was like 300. 300. Okay. So another 200. So, yeah. So we'll look for maybe another sample around 1600 depth. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah, that would have been yep. deeper. Right. Yep, yep. Thanks. Yep. You can also uh, pull up. Um, ROV Pilot Plus or ROV Pilot Plus or any of the graphs with uh, Herc depth on them and change the time on the graph and look back. Yeah, that's really convenient, but it, it doesn't show you the scale that well. You can see it graphically, but it... Uh, I think if you hover over a particular point with the mouse, it will give you the data point. Am I right about that? You are uh, correct. Which screen is that? I'm in the wrong portal. Oh. Uh, you mean Very on the... Nice. Um, Any of the Grafana screens with the Herc depth time? You can, uh, at the top of the screen, you can change the yeah. uh, time, how Go long to it looks house, back. Uh, so, like, you can see Katachi. Live. Uh, and it'll tell uh, you the depths. You 
can also, uh, on the top of one of those particular graphs, you can click on that, say view, and it will make that particular graph full screen. I'll show if you want to watch it. Which tab do you look at? ROV pilot? No. Either one of the um, ROV I'm pilots. On, uh, so, for example, I'm on Side ROV dive pilot data. list. Oh, yeah. Can you see my screen up here? Yep, I got it now, I think. I see, yep, I see what you're talking about. Thank you. So you go to view. Yep. Yeah, if, I, if you hover on the title, the yeah. Argus Herc depth, yeah, and then say Yeah, that's cool. It. And you can change the scale to the last. Yeah, then you can do the last however many. 12 hours, 6 hours, yeah, that's yeah, nice. Or you can put in a custom time, and you can go back and hover and look. Uh, yeah. Okay. See, so I'm always logged into the science portal, but that, that Grafana is is limited. It's not the same as oh, what's yeah, on yeah. House. we got to go on Ship yeah. House to get any. Yep, yep. Cool. Grafana junkie. Do we intentionally seek out ship shipwrecks or do we um, happen upon them? I think both, but I'll let Dwight talk about that a little huh. bit. Somebody asked that same question yesterday, I think. A similar question. Um, I can only think of maybe a half a dozen times where we just stumbled across a shipwreck that was unexpected. And that's almost all those who are in the Mediterranean. Um, and the wide open Pacific or Atlantic oceans like this would be incredibly rare. Um, but in a sea like the Mediterranean where there's been thousands of years of seafaring, uh, it I think it's more common. The steep part, we can start climbing whenever we're kind of at that steep, potentially more interesting part. So whenever we see shipwrecks, it's usually on purpose. We're, we're looking for them. And I will add that I think that there's, you know, permits and permission that is required for searching for shipwrecks, so we're always careful. It's not yeah. a, you know. Bruce, this is Nev. So if, if we are looking for one, it's with the permission of whatever country it might uh, Correct. belong to. Three zero meters bearing uh, two zero zero. Thank you for that, Paul. What's the uh, new heading? Two zero zero. Copy that. Just going straight for new eight point five. What kind of range do you operate the ROV from this ship with? Well, right now we're 1,844 meters away. It's pretty far. Totally. And more than a mile. It's more than a nautical mile away. Right? Yep. Up Deep. to 4,000 meters is kind of the limit. Thank you for tuning in there. Let's see. Let's see. Who do we have with us right now? Aloha mai e Amerika, Aino ko Honunui, Honunui, Turtle Island, America, um, Australia. I don't know what Australia is in Hawaiian. United Kingdom, Germany is Kenemania, Russian Federation. I I don't know what Russian is. What Russian Federation is in Hawaiian. Um, New Zealand I know is Aotearoa. Norway, Canada, Canada is Kanaka, Taiwan, Sweden, Philippines, <laughs> Netherlands, Hong Kong, Greece, the uh, ship heading changed too. Barbados, United Arab. Yeah, Emirates. we're going two zeros, two zero zero. And yep. Hawaii. Yeah, going straight for waypoint. Oh my Kako in Let's take a look at this. <laughs> Something to look at. <laughs> A lot of rocks and boulders here that look like really loose manganese crusts that have broken off from mm -hmm. farther upslope and sort of fallen down this hill. You did want to look at this one, right, Ryan? Yeah, let's take a look. Very well done, rock. All right, can we zoom in? Yeah, 
These are like the sakura coral, right? Or is that a different type? Mm -hmm. D different one. Different one? Oh, yeah. okay. It's the oh. one that has the black skeleton, oh, which is why it looks like the sakura, because the sakura tree has like the oh, black like bark and then that really bright flower that's yeah. on it. That's Metallagorgia. This is why giving things a bunch of different names is confusing. <laughs> zoom. Thank you. Is that OK, Ryan? Yeah, that's great. Thanks. It's like analytics. That's kind of how we know who's what countries. We don't know who, who. We just see little dots around the world. Your, the dots are on the places in, of land or in the middle of the ocean because Hawaii looks like a dot in the middle of the ocean. Mm -hmm. Cool, you can see the average time people are on the site and everything too. Oh a lot my of God, cool I information. I didn't even know that. All I, all I see is the country. That's all I see. <laughs> what, where is their time? I don't know. I cannot tell. This one? Mm -hmm. Oh, I see. I also don't see who's watching on YouTube. So sometimes someone will send me a comment and they'll be like, there's 500 people watching on YouTube. Which is really cool too. Thank you. Thanks to those of you who are sending in messages of who's tuning in from where. That's, that's also what people send in their comments. They'll say their name and where they're from and sometimes how old they are. So I usually try to just, I'll keep your information your your information and I'll just share where you're where you're at in the world like the most recent comment that shared where they're from is um, Greek or no not Greek they just said good Easter in Greek DC DC sent in a message about how mm. it's his or hers it's his first time watching there's 497 watching now on YouTube wow, wow that's a lot Thank you for tuning in on YouTube. Bridge, this is Nav. Another four zero meters bearing two zero zero, please. But if Something any of the YouTube like over here. viewers want to make comments, they have to actually come to Nautilus Live, right? Yeah, correct. Um, you have to come to the um, website. So if you just type in nautiluslive.org then you um, you may or may not see the live video and then down if you scroll towards the bottom of the page um, you'll see that there's a comment section there and we only turn on the comment section while we're diving but when we're um, in transit we usually turn it off because there aren't people sitting at these um, at these computers because we've got a lot of other work that we need to attend to, like the people <laughs> who work in the wet lab got to go well, through. Well, we do a lot of mapping, and, uh, you know, Katachi stands a, a mapping watch. Maybe he would like to answer questions <laughs> to the Nautilus Live audience while he's mapping. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not. I've uh, caught Katachi busy getting his PhD work done during those mapping <laughs> yeah. legs, so I think he might be happy with the current status. <laughs> we tend to lose our audience anyway when we're just mapping it. I, I don't mind answering uh, audience questions. I think they're really entertaining. Yeah. Yeah, we, we appreciate everyone writing in comments. Yeah. We do. Also, it's really, really heartwarming to see um, a lot of people who are genuinely uh, interested in, you know, b becoming part of this. Yeah. And they have a lot of questions where, I mean, I was once in their position Right. It would mean a lot to get an answer or a shout out. Yep, I agree. And here we have some some little pro tips from our viewers um, in Vancouver. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I'm trying to read that oh, one. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> from, from Vancouver, um, they say that they're watching the YouTube on TV or and then they have like the quad view from their computer. And then on their phone, they will be sending in the comments on their phone. That's an expert user. <laughs> we have a um, we have a viewer who's been who's on her his or hers eighth year of watching. Wow. Yeah, I know. There's some people that that I remember. There's one person that said they started watching in 2015. And um, 
Who else do we have here? Greetings from Scotland, 8.15 a.m. here. And it's, um, and my earth science exam stats starts at 9.30 a.m. <laughs> this is revision, right? Yeah, right? Yeah, totally. Oh, yeah. This can be a part of your revision for that exam <laughs> that you got. I wish you luck on your exam. Good you got luck. this. Just do yeah. a little bit more homework and then I feel like that's it. I feel like what are you guys' best advice for exam taking? Watch Nautilus Live an hour before. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Clear your mind a little. We always have Nautilus Live going on at, at the lab. We always have it going on in the background, so I've been in similar positions. Yeah, I have a big screen TV in a little lab next to my office, and I have it on all day long, and um, I can shut my door if it's too distracting, <laughs> if I'm doing something different, but generally I keep my door open and I can just hear it in the distance. It's like the coolest screensaver ever. Her. Thank you for the clarification. Um. thought it would get a little more dense. It's, it was picking up for a little while there, but we're still pretty deep, still pretty sparse. And there's definitely mass movement down these slopes. You know, a, a lot of these rocks that we're seeing are transported here. You can see the dusting of sediment everywhere that is no doubt moved from upslope. So it could, could mean that animals that do latch on and grow here for a while get wiped out <laughs> if there's a rock fall or a, or a land, small landslide down these slopes. I'm glad I could show those of you who are on YouTube and didn't know how to comment. I'm glad I could help show you guys the way on how to comment. Um, so there was a question as to what was the name of the fish that was seen yesterday, and I think Ryan has that name put up. Yeah, so that was a, uh, a type of anglerfish um, in the family Lophidae, L-O-P-H-I-I-D-A-E. Um, might have been in the genus Sladenia. Um, not sure about that, but these are all types of anglerfish. So. They don't have specific common names for like each individual species, but uh, I thought that was the goosefish, fish. though. Maybe it's different. Is it? Let's see. Bridge, this is Nav. Another four zero well, meters. It's kind of like two zero five, please. Oh yeah, it's a genus of goosefishes. So, goosefish, Sladenia. I believe there's a highlight on Nautilus Live of a goosefish absolutely having a feast on <laughs> all of these little fish that were swimming by it. And it was a cool highlight because it was just gulping tons of fish down. <laughs> oh, this is the Sakura. Right, Mel and I? I don't know. I, 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 I think have we my were calling Metallogorgia that. And this is a similar but different oh. species here. I'm sure. But I'm it does look like a cherry blossom for sure. Pretty you know, big sea cucumber here. Did you guys see the rockfish that was on the dive yesterday? No. Yeah. At the top. Was it like red? Oh, the red one. Yeah, the there was an orange one. orange oh. and white one and another orange one. Yeah, that makes sense. I they saw a shallow. Pic yep. picture of it. Shallow depth. Um, you can see it in the sea log replay. I was looking at that earlier. Mm. Um, See, those are the only type of fish I know pretty well. Are they uh, related to sculpin or something? Um, <laughs> or like, are they poisonous? I think a sculpin might be a type of rockfish. Yeah. I think there's thousands of different types of yes. rockfish. Sculpins are scorpionidae. No, never mind. I think they're different groups, but 
I don't think their range is as deep as we're usually diving. Yeah, I know. I remember seeing a lot of sculpins in the inner tidal. This is very cool. This person's been watching for a few for a few years now, but this is his or her first time sending in a message. Kia ora from Otipoti Aotearoa. Awesome. I'm trying to remember, when is Matariki in Aotearoa? I forget already. It's been, I feel like June. June-ish is when Matariki is happening. Yeah, I think, yeah. There's one is our summer. Mm -hmm. Plenty comments came in after <laughs> naming yeah. it. Hey, from Colorado. Hello there, UK. A, yeah, take a, a look. Yeah. yeah, it's a slime star. Wow. Oh, my God. It's yeah, so pretty. Start to zoom in here. I feel like this is our first slime star that's colored. The last one was white, yeah? Yeah, we've seen white ones. I think we have seen a few of these on another dive. Might be uh, eating something. It is a weird orientation for it to be at. Otherwise, kind of weird, huh? Yeah. It looks like it's coloring the water around it, too, yeah? Or it could be the karma, but I feel like it's like glowing red around it. So that's its mouth, right? No, its mouth is its in the middle. Is on the underside. underside yeah. Oh. It takes in water on oh. it. Um, that's called its madreporite. It's the name of the. All right. Um, are we good with this? Yes, thank it? you. Cool. Let's come wide. So sea stars have a really cool, what's called a water vascular system. So they take it in through that madreporite on that surface, and then I'm send it through all these really unique bit. canals out to their tube feet. And they huh. can control each individual tube feet by just hydraulics, basically. That's really interesting. It's pretty crazy. Whoa. They're is fun. Is there like an exhaust there. valve, too? An exhaust valve? Yeah. Or do they control everything with that top one? Uh, so there's a bunch of different canal systems. I've, it's been a while since I... Just yeah, there's ducts, different ring canal that goes around their mouth. Um, and then canals that go into each arm. I don't know about it. And it, one that's dedicated, like exhaust, though, that's interesting. That's cool. I didn't know they were hydraulic creatures. Yeah. All the uh, different echinoderms we see are, so sea cucumbers, too. There's the term muscular hydrostat, right? Mm hmm Oh, so like anemones too? Uh, anemones don't have the water vascular system, but I think they have more like defined musculature. Oh, okay. Has the Nautilus ever explored off the Canadian East Coast? Negative. We did a project on the RV Endeavour one time off Newfoundland. Um, using a small yeah, R, it was an, an OET project. Nautilus didn't spend too much time in the Atlantic. It uh, went from the Mediterranean to the Caribbean. Well, it did some work off Florida in the Gulf of Mexico. Well, actually, maybe we're okay.
So we're more or less heading right to the new waypoint now, right? Yeah. Sorry, come again? We're pretty much heading right to the new waypoint at this yeah, point. Yeah, we're going directly for it. Okay. I have uh, 230 meters left. This viewer has noticed the sediments on the seamounts are usually more sandy. Is the sea, vo is the sea floor or abyssal plain um, more muddy? Um, this is actually pretty muddy, I would say. We we did one push core on one of the other dives yeah, and it was it was really, really fine sort of mm. carbonate mud. I think the color of it throws us off because it's a carbonate uh, rich mud and mm. it uh, looks more sandy just by the color of it. Mm -hmm. But the push core we took the other day was definitely thick mud. Kind of think maybe we should have gone to the over to the other ridge, <laughs> on the other side of the waypoint. <laughs> well, I wonder if there's someone in the comments saying that. I told you so. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> uh -huh. But we have been exploring mostly the the ridges, so we're covering some new territory here, really which is important for the exploration work. Two interesting questions. I feel like this one this one I'm about to ask is easier than the next one. Um, has the Nautilus been through the Panama Canal? Yes. Yes, Roger. What are the least explored areas of the oceans? Everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Probably the Southern Ocean, I would say. Um, yeah, for sure. Yeah around Antarctica and the Southern Indian Ocean, Southern Pacific Ocean, Southern Atlantic. Um, it's hard to get to those places. The uh, ports are far apart, um, long distances to cover. Much less explored. The Arctic Ocean as well, almost impossible to get to, unless you have a big icebreaker. We know more about the moon than we know about the Earth. And pretty much. And most of the Earth is ocean, so that's part of it. Well, we have better maps of the moon than the ocean. That's because it's really hard to map underwater. Like, the, the moon doesn't have any water, so you can just take pictures. Um, but light doesn't, light or any other electromagnetic wave uh, doesn't go very far in the water. So we have to resort to mapping using acoustics. And um, right now, the the best sort of technology we have is to mount transducers underneath ships or some autonomous or uh, remotely operated vehicles can do this too. And um, yeah, we've started mapping the ocean in relatively high resolution. But I think that number as of recent a look at this coil. is still uh, like yeah, 20%. But it's just the ocean's a really big place. The yeah. other thing is that we do use space to observe the oceans. I mean, there's a lot of satellites that are basically dedicated at just looking down and um, studying the Earth and measuring, yep. you know, sea surface temperatures, sea salinity, things like that. Jeff, can you get a zoom on that? Thanks. Yeah, and bathymetry too. Victor Gorgia. Yeah. Maybe the first we've seen on this dive. Yeah, the satellite-derived uh, bathymetry is. Oh, a couple hundred resolutions, something like on the order of a hundred or hundreds of meters, whereas the multi-beam is on the order of maybe 20 meters, so. That's great, thank you. 
or 10 meters. Isn't the satellite resolution based on the difference on the surface of the sea? Yep. Yeah, it's gravitational, yeah. right? Which just seems crazy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> satellite, that's why they call it satellite derived bathymetry or mm -hmm. uh, what is it? Yeah. Sea level. Um, that was uh, Dave Sandin, right, from Scripps who figured? Sandwell. Sandwell. Oops. Yep. My mind There's mistake. a Stuart Sandin at Scripps who yeah. does coral oh, that's what ecology. I've Got that mixed up with. Yes, and Walter Smith, who's, I think, NOAA, the Sandwell and Smith satellite derived bathymetry grids are pretty famous. Um, yeah. That's what you see in Google Earth and some other databases that don't have Coming up pretty full res multi beam Dan. data on top. Well, we found our steep section. Yeah, finally. How long does it take for your sonar mapping scans to be added to the maps we see online? Oh, oh boy. I'm not sure Google Earth is still developing their, their product, so. Yeah, let's take a second before the next one, just until we're on top of this cliff. You'd have to go to some other resources. And um, it takes years. And I'm sure that there are different groups all doing mapping. Where do those get, you know, synergized into one? Mm. The, uh, um, there are like different, I think, collaborative projects that we um, we contribute to. Um, so when we do the mapping, like what's on high pack right now, uh, <laughs> Renny, my the lead navigator here, explained that there's like three tiers, um, and there's some highly regulated project that uh, we contribute towards, and those have like some more stringent standardizations um, and then lower quality ones that we kind of use as reference but they might have greater coverage got it is the uh, is that seabed 2030 the sort of one we contribute to yeah uh, the initiative I'm actually embarrassed to say I don't know the there name. is the there's Jebco which is the general bathymetric chart of the oceans and that's right. sort of an international consortium that seabed 2030 is, is working with i think i don't know all the details Randy would know this better but mm -hmm. all of nautilus data goes to r2r which is rolling deck right, to repository ship move, and that's um Roger. lamont doherty earth observatory Bridge, maintains that okay database Can we do two, two zero meters bearing two zero five please we're responsible for like cleaning the data and making sure it's accurate before we submit it to R2R, and then there might be some other quality checks that R2R does. Mm -hmm. But is then, the current speed um, still okay? from R2R, it can go to NCEI, which is the National Just Center for the sonar. Environmental that Information, and that that's first circle NOAA's again, then. databases. Right. And then um, I believe somehow Seabed 2030 and Jebco get it all for from, any that, of them? from that okay. same oh. pipeline. Interesting. I didn't know yeah. what the workflow was there. Um, well, right. If Argus is coming up to a wall, then <laughs> we're out of options. Um, but you know, when Herc's up against something steep, it means Argus is likely to be as well soon. Right now, I'm pretty far out in front. Has the Nautilus gone down in any trenches, or is that too deep? Yep. We did some dives near the Puerto Rico trench. Um, it, it's too deep, but uh, there's a couple of canyons that run into the Puerto Rico trench. The Mona Canyon's one of them, as several others. And so we did some dives in those deep canyons, um, but only to 4,000 meters. <laughs> And the Puerto Rico trench goes to 8,000 meters. Boring. <laughs> so we could only get <laughs> that sounds boring. 
I did a lot of that um, two years ago. We were, I feel like we were doing a lot of transects, and Bob would have me try to do them without any of the autos to practice. So we're finally getting more onto this ridge feature here, which is good. Um, you can kind of tell why the contours change from being curved upwards to curved downwards. <laughs> so that means we should be on a yeah. promontory, sort of. Yeah, these are good scans to look to each side and we'll see if we see any coral gardens in the distance or anything. Those rocks look a lot more cooked than the ones on the left side. Yeah, interesting. What are some of the more interesting or unexpected features the Nautilus has come across when mapping? Uh, <laughs> I mean, I guess seamounts are pretty interesting. Um, I don't have a whole lot of mapping experience yet, but so far, um, flat is uninteresting, and interesting <laughs> is bumps. Yeah. Bumps, well, just bumps. like watching this morning when you were, uh, Katachi was on watch, and we were covering some unexplored territory, and we knew that there was some feature, some bumpy feature there, but we really didn't have the resolution on it until Nautilus passed over it, and then it was like focusing the camera, and you just start to see all sorts of detail. Right. And the, the maps we get um, give us a better idea of, you know, where to do our dives and what features might be interesting, and I think biologists and geologists get together to plan out which areas we're going to drop the ROVs and take a closer look. And so little of the ocean is mapped in at this kind of resolution that oftentimes uh, th we have to make our own maps. Can we bump the ship like 10 meters uh, west? Roger. Bridge, this is nav. All right, that'll pull. This is uh, getting pretty amazing here. Totally. Take some zooms on these corals, please. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go for this top one. I think these are metallogorgia. Can we get a zoom here? Look at that little white sea star. Metallogorgia. Wow, look, it's so small. Sounds good. Thanks for letting me know. Looks so delicate, doesn't it? Yeah, mm -hmm. really. Some of the polyps are now. Oh, yeah. Katachi, are these what you were referring I think to? So. Yeah. Finally. <laughs> Is that a good on that zoom? Yeah, that's oh. great, thanks. Yeah, this is nice. This is what we've been waiting for. Is getting you over still this want area. the ten meters west? Uh yeah. Ten meters west, please. There's a little different. Ten meters west will bring Atalanta. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly. Looks like a small paragorgid, yeah. maybe. Paragorgid. Like further this way, yeah. I think. Yeah. Lots of these metallogorgia. Really cool. We zoom on that. Yeah. Which one? Got it. And then just to the right of the whip, there's a little globular sponge I'd like to see, too. Globular uh, sponge. Okay, let's get a quick zoom on this first one. This is a paragorgid that we're closing in on? Might be a little hemichorallium, I'm not sure. Look, yeah, it looks like hemichorallium. That's good on that one. Thanks. Kay. Oh, that's a fallen chrysogorget over there. We mm -hmm. actually don't really need to zoom on it. Got it. 
Thanks. Got another sea star eating over there. Oh, Ooh, yeah. Ooh, I wonder if its stomach is outside of its body. Do we want to look? Sure. Take a quick zoom on it. How deep can the deepest going ROV go? Uh, well, 6,000 is a common number. Dan may know how deep some of the others can go. There's a Jap J one from Japan that can go deeper, I think. Shinkai 6,500. Yeah. Which is an odd number because most of the manufacturers are making 6,000 meters. Can I zoom here? Is that the Japanese vehicle you're talking about, Dan? Yeah, the manned vehicle. Uh, that's the hu that's the human occupied vehicle, right? Oh, yeah, okay. but um, Schilling does a six thousand meter version of their vehicles to cost you more money. Oh, James Cameron that's went great. down Thanks. in uh, what was it called? Awesome. Deep Thank Deep you. Challenger or whatever. Challenger Deep. Challenger Deep. Yeah. Uh, no, the vehicle was named something. Um, to eleven thousand meters. I know that oh, there's like also Victor Vescovo. Yeah, the limiting factor is the name of that his vessel it goes to 11,000 is meters. that Cameron's or Victor that's that's, that's Victor yeah, five deeps two Does man it? vessel yeah Cameron's was just one one man I would go for 20 to the west no it's good yeah it goes to how deep west 11,000 meters so, so it does go oh, sorry you gotta come south a that's little bit deep there, Paul. Yeah, two that's zero crazy. Meters, it's the deepest place on Earth. Uh, heading. Mariana Trench. Two five zero, please. Sixteen hour endurance, so you're really just ascending and descending most of that time. Yeah. I like this question. Has the Nautilus team discovered any new species? And if so, how often does it happen? So on this expedition, we believe to have discovered a couple of new species. We took a lot of pictures, videos, and we were able to collect a couple of samples, whether it be search, I mean slurp, or snip and collect and so on. Um, I, I don't really know how many new species we may have come across and then even then um, once we take those samples back to the research labs there's more research that goes into it and yeah so it takes a while to describe a new species um, and it's hard to know whether you have a new species until you're back in the lab and maybe you've looked at the DNA or some more in-depth morphology on the organism um, but it's a really frequent thing that happens when you send an ROV down because we're in such undersampled waters down here, um, many hundreds of meters deep. So um, there's often new species to be found. We may have found some already on this expedition. Almost definitely, I would say. Next move will be south. Jeff.
What is the deepest Hercules has been? Bridge, this is Nev. Four zero meters south, please. What is the deepest Hercules has ever been? Four thousand meters is the depth limit of Herc, and I think it's been fairly close to that. Yeah, can you just set one aside for me. Who gets to name the new species? Okay, so this is a bit different. The new species that will be named, because we're in Papahana Mokuakea Marine National Monument, this is a protected area. We The, the monument has a cultural working group, and um, the, the species and everything we collect or new naming processes will ultimately go back to the cultural working group, I believe. Oh, I didn't know that. That's cool. Mm -hmm. Dwight, uh, please correct me if I'm wrong. Oh, yeah. The ship started moving south. I'm not really sure you, the answer Thanks, to that. Dan. Didn't Chris Kelly get a species named after him? I've seen a few things that are Kelly-I yep. in, the, in the guide. Is the um, Seabird Project named Map the Gaps? I don't think I've heard that name. I've Seabed 2030 is what I was referring to. I don't know. Let me um, consult map the, gaps. the master mapper. Sounds good. Have you ever covered any old underwater thermonuclear blast sites? Have we ever? Have you ever? No. Never have I ever. <laughs> no. I don't either. think I'd want to go there either. <laughs> There, um, I wish I could remember the story. There was a shipwreck sunk off San Francisco that I think was part of a nuclear test and Nautilus did conduct some dive operations there. But the Bikini Atoll has been pretty extensively studied. That was Not by us. You feel that? Yeah. What was, was that, that? The ocean? It was. It was, the, wow. it was a wave slamming up against this ship. Yep. Well, bam. It's the stern coming down. The stern. Slapping our tail. Mm. It's the Kraken. Yeah. <laughs> it's the Kraken attacking the ship. Oh, right. Okay. Are we ready? I am ready to rumble. <laughs> you know, sometimes just the... You got to few waves that interfere constructively and they get larger and they hit the side you of the ship right at the right to the south. Rogue angle wave. or whatever. Yeah. Is it? Oh yeah. How far to waypoint new? Five new, whatever. A 
about a uh, hundred and twenty meters. Sorry, I don't know if you can hear me. One twenty one two zero meters. Okay. Here's a question. Bear with me. Do the species of organisms like maybe bacteria and others uh, that carry chemosynthesis, um, chemosynthesis on the ocean floor vary significantly around the world, or do they tend to be less varied than, for example, the number of bacteria species in soils? Oh, yeah. wow. That was a pretty dense question. I had to, like, that read is a it dense in my question. mind. Um, read it in my mind first. You know, I don't know a, a ton of stuff about chemosynthetic bacteria um, or their diversity, uh, but that's an interesting question and that I'm sure there is an answer about. Um, I really don't know anything about soil bacteria, so yeah, no. tough question. Thank you for that amazing tough question, Seattle. Yeah, yeah, I'm coming back. We do have a microbiologist on the ship, but her watch is four to eight, so maybe you can repeat that question when Beth mm -hmm. is on watch. <laughs> Were there any octopus in this or the past few dives? I know we had a... I, they oh. saw a Dumbo octopus on... I, I think that's the only one. Yeah, is they've it? seen, a, I think, two Dumbo octopus, and that's, that's been it, I think. I guess I'm not mistaken. The Dumbo octopus likes them, and then the Chana cops likes us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We had the baby Chana cops last time. Yeah, the gray we had ones. Two ones, two of them. I feel like we've had four Chana copses throughout our. <laughs> I think you're right. Watches. We have a Walteria glass sponge right there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, let's take a look at who's living on that. Yeah. Just a, a Walteria okay, glass sponge a zoom. amongst these white octocorals that we've been seeing for a while here. We should log some of this stuff as well. I mean, Fiona. Those, oh, brittle stars, yeah. Are any of them going to fly for us? Jump, you can do it. It looked like they was going to try to jump. I know, yeah. What are these whippy things? Those are hydrozones? No. Oh, I think they are octocorals. <coughs> they are octocorals. Octocorals. Possibly little primnoids. Primnoids. If I Lots were of to them. get a pet, I would name it Prim Noid. Maybe Norella, but don't quote me on that. Like Primrose, but Prim Noid. <laughs> Prim Noid. All right. Eight o'clock. Halfway through our watch. You all know what that means. Uh, Rock time. <laughs> Rock time. Rock time. Cue the music. Let's look for a good one. What's a song with rock in it? I want to rock. We <laughs> will rock you. We will, we <laughs> rock will. Rock o'clock. <laughs> rock o'clock. I like that. I'm a fan. Not seeing a lot of loose rocks. The baby Chana cops did get highlighted. It just might take a day or two to actually get onto Don't the Don't let website. Dan pick this one up. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm currently piloting, so that's the uh, that's the arrangement. Boulder off to the what? left looks good, eh, Dan? <laughs> That'll fit in the bio box, sure, no problem. <laughs> It'll fit on the front porch, nice and flat. That does look like a good rock, but is that the Get kind of rock, rock that one? doesn't fit, fit in the bio box and you're branded for life. And and I asked Val if she was able to cut that. She says, yeah, this saw is probably not big enough, so. Maybe this guy. I can cut it. I got a saws off. Let's see if it's loose anyway. Yep. 
This is a very straight line separating these two. Yeah. Oh, there's a... Looks like another slime star. Yeah. Yeah. Closer. Closer. Oh. Copy. It's kind of large. Very flat. crusty. There's another one behind it there. Pretty crusty. Yeah. What does it mean when it's crusty? Does that mean it has a um, it has a big um, layer it, of ferromanganese on it? Yeah, it's kind of thin. Uh, it looks like it's all ferromanganese. Sorry, I didn't realize you were trying for more. Which means it's not. These aren't the rocks we're looking for, <laughs> <laughs> necessarily. Um, some of them are valuable to collect, and we have been collecting them for our colleagues at the U.S. Geological Survey, who are very interested in ferromanganese crusts. But to, for us to better yeah. characterize the oh, volcano oh, here, we top. want um, uh, these uncooked rocks, basically uh, unaltered or, or light, you know, not as much alteration. Oh. Tilt your camera down more. It's all black at the top. Can't see anything. Ooh. Yeah, so this looks all very crusty. I know that when we tend to try and gather a rock and then like we have a rock and then we go forward for maybe 20 to 50 meters and then finally there's that spot where Wait, there's oh, all the rocks. Always do. Yeah, there's one there on the left. Maybe a couple of those ones. Maybe a little bit less crusty. No, I think this is... Oh. This is kind of cruddy looking. Keep going. That's the rocks we saw a while back that were on that steep part when we first came in on the really steep part would be better, but obviously that's behind us. Bit of a point coming up there in Argus. Oh yeah. Push it forward. Yeah, we're okay to keep coming, right, Dan? Yeah. Rich, this is now. Hey, wanna, you're on a good track to hit. Four that. zero so meters south, please. Here, so not. George, your voice changed. Thank you for the snacks, whoever provided them. I'm so saving my waffle wafer for my morning cup of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good move. Very special treat. I was just craving one the other night. And they magically appeared. They've been hiding in our room this whole time. Little did you know. Really? Well. If you ask, you may receive. God, Dan's magic wishes seem to be really working. Waffle, <laughs> snack, and ice cream. <laughs> and the ice cream. That was a pretty cool one. I just made the connection for Lieutenant Dan Ice. Okay. <laughs> now I get it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have a single-digit IQ. <laughs> I don't know. I have no excuse. <laughs> Lieutenant Dan. At least you got it, Patrick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I'm <laughs> sitting over here, not sure what we're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> two days ago. <laughs> was it two days ago? Yeah. So rowdy comments. Yeah. Never mind. Oh, he Could jumped. Could it be the light? One. Right, it seems like they're really responding but to something. Why tonight as opposed to last night or the previous night? It's That's like the first night we've seen them kind of all parachuting off. This is, I, I feel like we may have seen it one sea star parachute okay, off once out of the other all the dives that we've been doing, which is a lot because we've seen plenty. Did anyone see earlier that sea cucumber on an earlier watch that was just kind of like writhing about and like rolling over? It looked like it was dancing. It was uh, really oh my weird. God, I did dancing it. or really stressed? Yeah. <laughs> whatever you, whatever feels better to you. <laughs> Appreciate the care. Tati, can you zoom out? I want to see where the next waypoint is after this one. It's uh, pretty much south. Right on that okay. um, knoll? Yeah. Okay. That's what I thought. That's where Beth wants a sample, we think. In a low oxygen zone. How long is this dive planned for? Uh, till noon tomorrow. Noon tomorrow. Yeah, let's see how we're doing with progress. We're at waypoint, we're at... Uh, Five-ish. It's new waypoint five, or...? Yeah, so we're right here. Um. Okay, so that's about... a little more than a third of the way. How many waypoints um, do we have Four for hours. this dive? Twelve. Roger. Eight hours. So. <laughs> that means we get to be on the shallowest area tomorrow, right? Seven hundred meters. I'm just centering the ship so I don't have to keep doing yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, good. Sometimes it makes sense to do it. Bridge, this is Nev. Another four zero meters south, please. Sorry, that's kind of been my way of just exploring more. Got it. Got it. There we go. 
Well, another interesting, um, another interesting fact about this expedition is that a handful of the seamounts that we uh, were we are diving on that we do we dove on the past couple of weeks um, were unnamed. They didn't have a name, so we're hoping that with the with the I don't want to call it research. With the research we're doing, with the dives that we're doing, um, we're hoping that we can collect some data that will be helpful for the cultural working group to to understand what's down here, the characteristics of these seamounts, and give a a good name for these seamounts. The entire ridge is named Didi Uokalani Seamount Ridge. There are some other names that are that are that we use, like this one we're on is King George, there's Nutka, there's Argonaut, Soliday, There's a ship going Ludon. due south right now. Yeah. But okay. there's about three unnamed seamounts that we came across. And then we're actually seeing a couple more bumps in the ocean floor too, yeah, that are yep. indicating some other random little hot spots or plumes or spots. Super cool. Cool stuff. It's 3 a.m. in South Texas. I would uh, encourage you to go to sleep because sleep is important. Is that Atlanta coming around? Yeah. You enjoy it that much, you keep on watching. A dark colored uh, rock sitting there saying, Pick me up. <laughs> yeah, we could uh, poke at another one if you like, um, but I'm, it looks similar to me. All the rocks that we're looking at are mainly lava rocks, yeah? Are what? Lava rocks. Yeah, they they were at one point. Uh, they've since been slightly altered. Um, the this is like a ferromanganese crust or pavement that I think is formed on top of the lava, uh, the basaltic rocks underneath, and um, it's not really a good sample for us to understand aspects of the volcano's history mm. because the rocks have been altered by interacting with seawater for so many millions of years. Mm -hmm. What is the name of these corals that we're seeing? We're pretty much seeing consistently this same coral, right? I don't want to call it primnoid, but maybe it is. Yeah, I think it is. Primnoid. Plenty, plenty primnoid. Perhaps some of the unbranched ones are bamboos, but not sure. Unless we get a zoom on something, it's hard to say. But it looks to be mostly this branching primnoid, maybe norella is the genus. Prim, Noid, Norella. This one's a little different. You want to zoom on that? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, and fan over there. Good eye.
Yeah, can we zoom in? Is this a prim node also? Um, let's see. I believe so, yes. We're not seeing a ton not seeing the skeleton while it could be a bamboo. But I believe it's a prim noid. Thank you. Oh, all right. Is there any current at all? I don't feel like there's a crazy current right now. But I could be wrong. I'm not operating any vehicles. I take that as there's no current. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm gonna try and uh, move the ship to swing you guys further west, so southwest. That sound good? Bring us to a closer contour lines. Um, whatever makes sense for the waypoints. Um, yeah, the uh, next waypoint is slightly southwest of us, so it's in that direction. Bridge, this is Nav. Four zero meter is bearing two four zero, please. Katachi, do you see um, where the old waypoint was and yeah. the trajectory we were going to take up to the waypoint six? I think it is. Um, see how it's brighter on those contours, sort of off to the right. Oh of yeah, the you're right. Yeah, this so direction I, might yeah, be better. so maybe we can get the ROVs um, like just due south, not not go to where the original waypoint was, but go due south, kind of. Oh, just go straight south. Okay. Just go straight, and then try to pick up that uh, other ridge. You know what I mean? Yeah, that works too. Yeah. Bridge, um, can you please cancel that move? Four zero meters south. And I'd like to try to maybe go a little faster. Are you guys cool with that? Because Unfortunately, we're not seeing a whole lot here. Mm. Yeah. I'd like to get another rock sample, but we're still stuck in this sort of crust zone. Yeah, I mean, so we've been going 0 0.3 knots, and I think we could do 0 0.4. The only thing is if we find something that we like, then we have yeah. less of a chance to sample so. it. But I think that's probably a risk we're willing to take. Yeah. I'd like yep. to try to get to waypoint 6 by the end of our watch, because that'll keep us on track for the dive. Copy that. You want me to uh, tell His Majesty to speed it up? Whatever you guys think. All right. All right. Mario. Mario. <laughs> okay, I can touch it. Point five. Point five. Point okay. five. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Bridge. This is Nav. Is it possible to move the ship uh, at 0.5 knots? Good job, Paul. I think something that I'm really enjoying about this um, expedition is seeing this kind of teaching the next generation, perhaps. I've been off SPL because I've been 
this harping on Paul for the last two hours. <laughs> awesome. I'm, I'm being really nitpicky because I'm bored over there. I don't hear you, Paul, what by the way. Direction, you said? Yeah. Due south. Yeah, you're, you're off SPL over there. Paul's doing really excellent. He's it's come late years since he first came out here. Seems like yesterday. What um where is our stern facing? Oh. Uh, waves. Like one one ten. If you watch that camera on the aft cam of the ship, you can kind of see it. Right. Possible rocks here. I'm trying to figure out where is this swell coming from? Oh, the swell is coming like from behind. And behind is south? East? Uh, no, it west? is east. East. Yeah. You like any of these rocks? Right? East swell. And the wind is coming from the south, so. It's hard to tell until you pick one up and you see that it's mostly crust, but if you see something that looks chunkier, yeah, not look flat. A one, not a flat one. We can go for it. Um, yeah, like, I mean, this piece is massive, but maybe we can break off a chunk or. I doubt if you can break a chunk off of it, but you can try. There's a roundish one there with a coral growing on it to the left. Uh, this one? Uh, no, farther to the left. The one with a little pin on it there. Oh, yeah. I don't know. They might be attached. What about that one? We ready? Sorry, I missed the, uh, which one are we going for? Actually, let's just pick this one up and have a look at it since it looks like it's easy. Midwatch stretch. I'm gonna get a midwatch stretch too. Nope. Any of the other ones loose? That one is not loose. Can you uh Turn, come to your right, okay. touch a couple other ones to your right, then we're out of here. What about the one right close to the bottom of the screen there? This big one? Yeah. Wow, you'd think it would be loose. Yeah, okay, we're out. Now, let's try to get into another zone here. Yeah, right. Bridge, this is Nev. They're all... Four zero meters south, please. Yeah, so that's sort of indicative of that, you know, there are volcanic basaltic rocks below these crusts that they're attached to still, so we're not really able to pry it off, and if we are, it would just be all crust. So we need to try to get to another part of the seamount that has, like, rocky outcrops where we can pick some better rock samples, not just this large sort of slope feature completely okay, encrusted. Come up five if you want, Paul. Oh, five or ten. Cold fly it a little tighter with that tether, potential tether twist there. Is that a sea anemone? Yeah, 
Yeah, maybe a tube and enemy. Seeing a couple of them. Can we take a look at one of these? Sure. I'm going to go. Uh, Thanks. Go ahead, Jeff. Look at those long tentacles. Oh, Are those yeah. called tentacles? Yep. Okay. That's great. Thanks. You want to sit here? Well, I don't know. No, come on, I'll It's okay. Like, hop into a hole. Oh. It's always hard to tell whether those are tube and enemies because you have to look for an inner set of tentacles around their mouth, sort of inside of the disc there, which is hard to get unless you get a really good zoom on them. back here <laughs> musical chairs <laughs> just for a half an hour he said yeah yeah he's working on the dive plan yeah oh, that's where he went yeah cool every single chair in this in this van gives an entirely different view like it blows my mind uh, it's literally like three feet in an another seat but it's still like I feel yeah. like I'm looking at 20 screens, whereas when, if I'm sitting over there in the SCF seat, I'm looking at li maybe five. Yeah. Yeah, I'm so used to using the little Telestrator screen that when I go to the data logger position, I'm like, where do I look? <laughs> <laughs> Fiona, have you been able to s sit in any of these other seats at all yet? Mm, no, not really. No. I was on Dwight's seat for a little bit, but not really to check anything out. That was when we were coming up. So, mm. yeah. Look at this shelf right here. It's a very interesting rock feature. Yeah. It looks like an Eridogorgia. Oh, yeah. And then That's we fun. have a Walteria sea sponge. I'm surprised there's not anything on the underhang there. And then those are the primnoids, right? Bridge, yeah. this is Nev. I think so. They could be... Four uh, zero meters south, please. Bamboo corals, but... Look at that little pointy thing down there. It looks like a primnoid. Nope. Crinoid, not primnoid. Crinoid. Oh, yeah, on the other side of that rock. Looks like a sea star. Yeah. Interesting sea oh. star. What is yeah, it doing? Looks like it has its stomach like out of its body, but I don't it. understand why that is. I'm adjusting the volume on this thing. I hope I have to remember to adjust it back when when Dwight returns. Wait. Are we just going to pass on that sea star with the... Yeah, um, I think so. Inverted. Yeah, I, I think we're kind of just we're, we're trying to gun towards the next waypoint right now. I believe. Oh. Sorry, I, w I wasn't watching. I wasn't looked at it. All good. All good. Oh, it's all right. The down screen. I think it was the same star we've been seeing. Yeah. Next one, though. Make sure we say it out loud so we can ask the pilots to. I don't think I've seen a sea star with its stomach out yet. I'm going to show you a picture. I really want to see that. Oh, you weren't here. During one of our watches, that. we we saw cool. um we actually saw two sea stars. One you could one th the stomach was literally outside of its Come body. Up, but the other sea star is like it was 
like here's the car roll and then the sea star was like wrapped on top of it and then you can cut you could kind of see like the mucus that it just mm -hmm. it it covers the in the entire coral with it and then that's kind of the process that it does with breaking down the coral and making it eating eating it yeah <laughs> digesting it outside yes. of its body so that it can it gets sort of broken down enough where it can suck it back in that's yeah. crazy it's quite an interesting spectacular what a spectacle i know I know what I saw. <laughs> <laughs> Another little sea star there. Although it is, yep. Can we get a partial zoom on this yellow fan here? Here. Go ahead, Jeff. Push it. a nice fan coral there too. Push in a bit more if you want. Lasers in. Okay. Mahalo. That's great, thanks. What is the name of that coral that we're looking at? Um, not sure whether it's a Canthagorgia or a yellow Plexarid, Swiftia maybe. Um, you really can't tell unless you get a good look at the, the polyps which you can't always do. Yeah, that's but good, We've Evil. seen a few Swiftia today, mm -hmm. the Plexorid mm -hmm. yellow octocoil. They wanted longer explanations, yeah. A little bit, but we can work on it. Okay. We can work on it together. Okay, next one, next one. Mm -hmm. Looks like a tiny little sea sponge right there. So tiny, tiny sea sponge. Ooh, an enemy! Wow, big one. Looks like it's just waiting for a brittle star to fall off of that coral. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so anemones eat sea stars? No, oh. <laughs> I just made that up. But <laughs> in my mind, that's what's happening. Jump on me! This is another metallogorgia quick. here. Quick, if you want, on the show-stopping chrysogorgia on the corals. Kahiauli. Hi, hi. Ooh, look at that. That's a great shot. Metallogorgia, you said? Mm -hmm. Metallogorgia, close up. With, are those uh, snake stars? Yeah. They're very brown, reddish looking compared to the last bunch of, of the yeah. other sea stars that we've been checking out. Right. Okay. Looks like it might be in the shadow a little bit or something. Kill a capella, I know kill a yeah, my cut okay. And then you could add in that there's a, an, an anemone in there. Anemone. Bridge, this is Nev. Another four zero meters south, please. I just learned the other day how to properly spell anemone. This whole time I thought it was anemone. Anemone. You thought it was what? Anemone. Oh, yeah. It's See, when I hear that, it doesn't even sound wrong to me. Anemone. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Ryan. Okay. I appreciate you. <laughs> I worked on anemones during my undergrad, and I think, I don't think I learned how to pronounce the word right until, like, <laughs> when I was defending my thesis. <laughs> even then, I probably was getting it wrong. Like, <laughs> time. It shows that we're human, right? Yeah. We all can't be also perfect shows that all the time. a hard word to, to say. <laughs> with lots of M's and M's happening. Anemone. 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 The first time I heard it, I was watching Nemo. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure I just took it from there. May I ask you a question, Ryan? Of course. You have a job, yeah? Yeah. And then, like, so what is your, what is a regular day in Ryan's position? What does that look like? Yeah, so there's, there's lots of different days, really. Um, so the, some of the best days are days, like, where we get to go out to sea, right? And mm -hmm. do, do field work. 
um, that's what we really look forward to most of the year and then we take our samples back um, I do various things in the lab I, I a lot of the organisms we bring back to the lab uh, I extract DNA out of them and then I uh, do a process where you amplify the DNA of it um, sort of like a PCR test you would get for COVID except I'm doing that on the DNA of a deep sea critter to figure out what it is um, I do that quite often um, and many, many days just writing or um, using statistics and writing code on my computer to analyze data that we bring back. Because um, a lot of my work is right, sort of building uh, models that predict where corals are and how that their habitat might change with climate. So a lot of that is really computer-based. So writing a lot of code, um, doing statistics, looking at data. Um, and then also just writing papers, day-to-day <coughs> -day tasks, what do you, you know, answering email. What do you think of that rock sample with the coral on it? Uh, th that that That's sponge a nice is a Walteria sponge. What's that? That is a Walteria. Uh, let, me s let me ask Val here if she's there. We want to ask Val if we want to collect this rock. About seven seconds a year, 15 seconds left. Uh, I think we should probably keep moving then because I don't know if we want to grab a whole coral. A few round but rocks too. Yeah, there are some other round ones here though, maybe. Val or Dwight, are you guys watching from the lounge? Do you guys see any rocks here? I'm a monkey. Do you go out to see a lot for your um, field work? Um, not really. This is uh, this cruise is the first time I've been out since 2019. Wow. So um, most Bridge, of my work is has been. Another four zero meter south, please. Um, a few cruises in 2018, 2019, mm. um, and some other cruises that I wasn't on but were associated with the same project that I used data from. Crinoid? Right over here. Oh, I didn't see it. It was a little dark one. That's okay. If it was super interesting, I would have been like, wait, let's go back and look. But <laughs> we've seen lots and lots of crinoids throughout this expedition. We're on the hunt for a rock. Farron manganese. This rock looks pretty good. I don't know if it's attached. Or what about one of those two? No, those don't look good. Probably. This looks pretty. Cantaloupe sized is what we want. Yeah. I, I'm just saying it out loud to remind myself for the most part. And now I'm trying to remember what does a cantaloupe even look like? It's hard to get context to. to I feel like once I see the arm there, oh, nope. Stuck. No budging, I see. Yeah. Knock, knock. You want to come home with us today? Maybe not. Okay. <laughs> Rich, now hold position. can be 
be so deceiving. I think it's okay, yeah. Yeah. Thank you for trying. Yeah. Said no, thank you. Thank you, thank you, no, thank you. <laughs> I feel like science should be considered its own language. <laughs> it is like learning a new language, sort of. You have to really take in a lot of Year -a -day. different jargons and Latin names. So are all scientific names Latin? Yes. I think I think there's Greek names too. Oh. Yeah. So every organism has a has a Latin Lonely. name, um, and some have common names. It's a very interesting sea star there. Looks like similar to all the other ones we've seen. So that we think the genus on that sea cucumber is Amperima. Amperima. This screen is blocking Sorry. that little part of it. Thank Could've you. Could have just done that. Thanks. <laughs> Amperima. <laughs> Elliptidae. Elliptidae. Elliptidae peniagon Amperima. Perhaps. Yeah. How's my science coming along? How's my science language coming along? Wonderfully. <laughs> Some more wall terrier sea sponge right there. I wonder. What is that one called again? That's Umbalula. Umbalula. Type of sea pen. Looks like it's really getting bent over by the current. Yeah. According to somebody, musk is Greek-based and Latin. There is a protocol to where which language is applied and to when they are mixed. Hmm. Roger. Mahalo. I'm having a hard time trying to identify whether a rock has a is mostly from manganese crust or if it's like a good rock for us to try and grab for the dating yeah i think it's an art not a science so a lot of it if it's flat then you can sort of assume that it's going to be mostly crust because there's not a lot enough like sort of interior to I it see, so I that's see. why we're looking for a more sort of cantaloupe or oh okay that makes a lot of sense so that no good that's no good yeah I guess it's, it'll be a Ha'avina for us people to go in 
imi no welo ina inoa o na ano poha kuma ke kai. Yeah. Try to look for the for the names of the pohaku that live in the ocean. What is or pohaku? Pohaku is rock. Rock. Yeah. No, uh, it's also like I feel like much of these are just fastened to the ocean floor. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And then with the sediment drape on them. You can't see the bottom of them, so you think that right. they're just loose on top. And Probably not, yeah, that one. Or what? Wait. Too big. Yeah, that's mm, that looks like crown manganese. And I thought I was about to lose this chair. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> that one, maybe? Yeah, maybe we could try maybe. that one. I'll, I'll try to circle it one more time. There. Let me know if you want me to circle it again. There might be <laughs> others in the area, too. Give a shot. It's hard to say. Mm, it's hard to say, definitely. You know, the closer you get, the more questionable. Getting pulled around here. Yeah, no worries. Is that a tiny little, did you see that? I, I did not. <laughs> it, was, it passed by very quickly. How are you doing, Fiona? Are you, good? you okay? Yeah, I'm okay. Oh, the ship went yeah. 20 meters um, north. Gee. I put the, the, DP yeah, I the pressure on myself to come and sat in this chair. Yeah, you're, you're, the, the, you're the watch leader now. <laughs> <laughs> I hope they're watching on the big screens in the lounge so that they can call upon us when What's they up? see something. Hard to say. Yeah. Make a note, Dan. DP run out. Was Val still in there when you left, Fiona? Hmm? Was Val still in there when you left? Mm -hmm. Maybe. Yeah, are we able to sort of check for some rocks over here? I know we're getting pulled around. Sea star. I think that's that Astanactis we've seen a few of, including the one eating the bubblegum coral yesterday. On SPL, you can zoom in, Jeff? Sorry, was it on SPL? What was the name of this uh, sea star? Aspenactus. <laughs> sea star. Aspenastus. Aspen, it's oh. like T-H. <laughs> Did you say D? T-H-E-N. Oh, E-N. It's sitting on something. A-C-T-I-S. Uh, Thank you, Ryan. Uh-huh. C-star. It's making its way to its next coral victim. Oh, 
Mm, not seeing much that looks Did too Did you change loose. their bearing or are they still struggling up there? Um, yeah, the course of course of the ground is he's on there. This is interesting. There's different perspectives on scientific names. We did or, or how it's did. put together. Huh? Someone claims yes, it is its own language. Yeah. The and ship's course over ground takes is a long that time and a lot it? of like staring at scientific papers and not <laughs> knowing what you're looking at <laughs> before you get good at it okay. or even able to get through a paper and um, it is something that takes a lot of a lot of work. All right up there, George. I commend people who can just stare at papers and figure out what words mean. Roger. That's pretty cool. Good on you folks for being uh, amazing scientists. Yeah. And thanks for being patient with us who are slowly making our Bridge way nav. into the doors. Uh, four zero meters no, south, I love please. having you guys here. You guys ask great questions. You pick it up quicker than I would, for sure. It's more than I. <laughs> She's good. It's a team effort. The repeating is smart. That's like a great way to yeah. learn things. That's Sorry, Paul. I'm trying to get it back. That's the, the main way I learn. I've I've discovered. I I hope I don't irritate people too much. And if I do, I just tell them, let me know, and I'll stop repeating after you. But <laughs> if I if you say it and I repeat after you, I have it's easier for me to kind of retain it. Yeah. Mm. What about that one? You think? Okay. Pretty attached, maybe. Yeah, these are pretty attached. Hmm. I'm so curious as to how Fran Manganese grows. Like, how does that work? And right. Yeah. I'm gonna have to go and hunt down our our rock scientist, the geologist, and Microbiologist. She was like explaining it to me the other night, but I know I can't even. <laughs> so it, it precipitates out of the seawater. I was wondering if it was like the microbes precipitating it out, but it's actually um, the so rock. Like something in the middle that it allows it to like nucleate around, mm. uh, and then the minerals come out of the seawater. Wow. It's mostly iron and manganese, hence the name. A little bit more. Looks like there's it's more little options little here. Glass sponge there stopped. <laughs> Is any of Herc's flyover footage later studied? Do you make notes of when certain animals appear or get? Requests from your peers for specific footage, even if it's just a few seconds. Yeah, it definitely is used later on, and it uh, becomes publicly available um, after a few weeks after the expedition. And we take really good notes while we're going. We have Fiona over here, oh. our data logger, mm -hmm. um, taking still images and noting different things we're saying and seeing, um, taking highlight clips that people might want to look at in case I don't want to look through all of the footage. Um, so we, we really take a lot of efforts to go through it. Okay. These rocks might look a little bit better, Dwight just said, so. Um, yeah, well. Scratch at one rock. Sounds good. Can we scratch at a rock, please? I'm trying to see. Maybe this one looks promising. That one maybe too? Yeah, maybe. Pretty small. Yeah, why don't we? We'll see what the arm here can touch. Maybe look 
elsewhere. Twenty circles up above. Oh. Maybe that one. That's correct. Yeah. What about that one? You think? Mm. Yeah, can we try Questionable. This one, maybe. Uh, we need to move. Remove the arm out of there. Yep. Maybe, I don't know. Mm, that one maybe? That looks pretty good if we're able to get to it. Right. It's a little Probably. big. Yeah. Touch it, Paul. It's a big bump on it. Nope. Oh, oh okay. I think that That's might be too big. big. I feel like I feel like big. I can hear Val in my ear saying that is too big. Don't do it. I wonder if that one's this. Roger. Yeah, Dwayne is saying too big. Too big. <laughs> too big. Oh. Too big. Shucks. Darn. Sorry, Paul. Maybe that'll be telling that some of these other rocks will be a bit more um, loose for us. Right. Perhaps, or maybe this one over here. Yeah, top right looks. Uh, that might be attached to the other rock. Little you want the ship to hold yeah. position? Well, let's no. try no. here. These look promising. Which one are we going for? One in the middle. Really? Not that one. The other one he just. That one. Come on, little guy, please. That other one moved, but is that. That might be too no, much. Longer. Oh, you got oh, it. oh, there we go. Thank nice. you. Strong. Okay, Great. Dwight said looks good. Can you guys hear Dwight? Or yeah. I? Okay. I cannot. Oh, okay. I cannot. I can't either. What? Data lab. He's coming oh, from the data lab. Oh, okay. Oh, I'm hearing him on SPL. Now I can hear you, Dwight. Sorry. Okay. Okay, Roger. Yeah, that looks great. Do we want uh, the, uh, Kahiaoli? No. Sample. Yay, a rock. <laughs> I'm so relieved. Sorry, that was kind of fast on the spin. Is that good on the view, Fiona? Yeah, you're good. Do we know what, um, where we want to put it? Starboard, which one? Uh, go ahead and put it in starboard, A. Eh? I got it. I'm going down. If I can. Which letter? A. A. Alpha. Copy that. Mm. No, it Is ain't gonna fit, Nate. Oh, wow. Do we have E and F available? Yeah, it's uh, one of the bigger boxes. Yeah, either one. E is fine. Okay. Echo. Beautiful. Touchdown. Nice. Bridge, okay, this is now roll. four zero meters south, please. Only one hour late from rock o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> Got it done. George is driving the boat like mm. Paul Fife's ROV is all over the map. <laughs> <laughs> Yay, first, was that our first sample of our watch? Yep. Yay, sample number one down.
All righty. Good job, team. Off. Onward, the Light Brigade. Is the ship still trying to head due south? Yep. Okay. So you're probably both aware, but it is not. Yeah. yeah. I need to see that ROV, so I can touch it. Oh, sorry. Right here. Yeah. Thank you. Oh wait, that was wrong, sorry. Okay, so that, at half a knot. that answered my question as to where they're at. They're in data lab. Yeah, I think they're planning the next dive. But I don't, I'm not listening to anywhere but SPL. So, so the way I worked that out was if it's going 15 meters a minute and we have our 20 meter oh. thing, right? So you have about a minute and Argus is running you over. But if you take the full minute and we do two or three in a row, then you're behind the... So a lot of times I'll glance at the clock up there and time it. To right. Yeah. But you know, I don't know count my head or, you know. Wow. I'll I'm learning things about this system. I know, I just kind of sit here and watch everything's happening. I'm like, wait, where did that sound come from? Is that you, God? <laughs> <laughs> Is it finally happening? <laughs> <laughs> Did we need we did we didn't need to collect any other water sample when we collected that? No, it was a Valrock. Beth rocks we typically take a water sample with. Roger, did we get the location? Did we write down the location of where we collected that rock? Do we need to write that down? Roger. Just the description of like the surrounding area. Yeah, that's in all the pictures Computers. and the grabs and everything mm. we take. Sounds good. Also, there's at the end of the cruise, we'll get navigation data. So for every second, every time stamp, every single second, you'll have lat longs, all the different mm -hmm. positions mm -hmm. of the ROV, pitch roll, altitude. So and much all the information. Too. I kind of feel cool with this headset, but I, I don't see myself needing it in my personal life ever. Yeah. <laughs> A headset or? <laughs> this headset. Oh, yeah. That has one ear and a mouthpiece. Yeah. I thought about that, too. <laughs> You're not a gamer, huh? I'm not a no. gamer. Me either. <laughs> My other half is a gamer, though. Maybe I could just borrow his. Yeah, just go me. <laughs> <laughs> Dan, looks like there's another thing that gamers have t that helps them with this. What's that? Headsets. <laughs> They're used to them. Yeah, what well, my kids go through one every like three months. Oh so. my goodness. Kotachi, do you have any kids? Do I have any kids? Yeah. No. Oh. <laughs> How old do you think I am? <laughs> I mean, I know some people who are 21 and they have kids, so. That is true. Yeah. Do kids have no? Ryan, do you have any kids? I do not have any children. <laughs> I feel like age is not a thing to have kids. No. I, yeah. Uh, no, it's not. I think the only two people with kids are Dan and I. In this, in this room, I believe, yeah. In this room, yes. Depends. My dad's brother has uh, great, great grandkids. Yikes. That looked like a really, really small. Look, that looks like a pumice rock. Oh, I didn't see it. I'll have either. to point it out again. Bridge, this is Nev. 40 South, please. We had a family reunion and there was 
twenty six offspring twenty six of his offspring at the family reunion it's a lot of kids yeah well, between the kids the grandkids and the great grandkids there was twenty six of them wow. wow that's incredible for your brother uh no my dad's oh. my dad's brother my uncle oh that looks like a pumice rock too Hey, can we zoom on that rock real quick? Sure. Go ahead, Jeff. Push in a bit. I love seeing a different rock, you know? Do we need another pumice rock? I don't think so. But if the data lounge... It's so cool. Oh, if you guys need a pumice rock, let us know now. <laughs> Interesting. Where are you from? Do you guys think that's a pumice rock? It's definitely a different color than the other ones. Yeah, it looks There's some tiny sea stars over there. Thank you for the close-up. Yeah. Moving on. Roger. Another Ambalula. Sea pen Ambalula. Under my arm, Balula. <laughs> almost every time I say it. <laughs> <laughs> Who else at home has been thinking that when we're, whenever we say it? I wonder. Ambalula sounds like a... Um, it kind of sounds like a Hawaiian nice English word, too. Totally. Looks like uh, cookies and cream over here. <laughs> uh oh, I said I said the forbidden words. <laughs> yeah, you, whose favorite candy bar was that? <laughs> I think that was Paul's. Paul has been very quiet. Lots of brain muscles probably being used right now. What was said about candy? Cookies and cream. I think oh, that yeah. I the thought terrain here looks like cookies and cream. Or is that ice cream flavor or is that a candy? It's like a candy. It's like Hershey's cookies and cream flavor. Oh. It's like so good. If you have more than five bites, you probably feel sick. But like... <laughs> the first four are great. <laughs> yeah. White chocolate is like straight sugar. Yeah. I remember seeing this commercial of... That's People cool. bathing in white chocolate and dark chocolate, and I'm just like, ooh. I is thought that that's a cool rock, too. Is this a sample? Ralph's going to be so happy. <laughs> I could push it down the hill with the ROV. Wow. But if we squeeze it between both arms, that's what I'm be saying. Able to come <laughs> up with it. A bear hug? <laughs> <laughs> during, um, during Hawaiian New Year's, there's a a bunch of games um, that are are played, and among the games that we play is who can lift the biggest rock. Really? <laughs> yeah. I gotta show you guys some videos. What is there? What is the name of that? Do you remember the name of that? No, I don't remember that game. I remember um, the one you throw the big rock. Who can throw it the farthest? You yeah. throw the rock. There's is that also where, uh, Dwayne Johnson got his nickname from. <laughs> really oh. win that? Perhaps mm, no. that'd be. <laughs> be an interesting little story. I really got to show you guys these videos, though. You, you, see, you see men and women play these games. The Did you ever go play Kamaloka Imakahiki? I never played officially and, 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 and enrolled or registered to play at the Makahiki Games. Kamaloka'i. I was there and I helped to conduct. Self. I was like a referee, perhaps, for those games. And I would just play later, not necessarily as a part of the competitions. I How many broken toes are a result of this game? <laughs> oh, no. No, bro nothing breaks. You got to stay clear. Can we get a look at this coral? I think. I yeah. played one year, and the pohaku they use for the wahine is, is huge. Go ahead, Jeff. W were you able to lift it? Yeah, but, like, I couldn't it's throw it that like far. It's overgrowing <laughs> it didn't go uh, far. coral skeleton. This is dead. 
No, it is not. Uh, no. It's so yellow. It just has its polyps all retracted. Kaheoli? Mm -hmm. All right. What, what is this? Uh, I can't tell if it's a, a canthogorget or a flexor. There's a barnacle growing on it. Barnacles. Barnacle. <laughs> a couple of barnacles, actually. A whole bunch of them. It's so there. interesting to see the barnacles like this. I know, when they have their feeding tentacles extended. Would those different. be considered its tongues? Sure, it does a similar, similar thing. One of our scientists ashore, Asako, thinks that this coral's a, a plexorid. Potentially the one in the background, too. Plexorid? Great, thanks yep. for the zoom. That's so wrong. <laughs> P-L-E-X-A-U-R-I-D. X-A-U-R-I-D. Yeah. It's right here if you want to look at it. Oh, okay. Like star red. You got it. With the sea star How's that? See an enemy. Hello. On one, on one file, the sea anemone is called an okala in Hawaiian, but on another file, it says it's okole in Hawaiian. Come up a bit. What was the first one? Okala. Okala. I want to figure it out. Yeah. A little steeper here. Growing up, that's why I, s I my mom would point out the okole, and it's like the brown ones. Did you ever see that one? Off the, to off the top of my head, no. Bless you. More, so maybe, like, what is it? Akole. Uh, okala. Okala. Or okole. Yeah. Maybe it's just a spelling thing, too. I like okala better. Me, too. <laughs> No problem. Just a few of these yellow octocorals here, not a ton of other stuff. How I far away from the next wave? I don't have a lounge, yeah. I can't hear the lounge from the pilot seat. The hurt pilot. Do you have a lounge button over there, Paul? Is it only a nav? It's privileged. Ask it. No stupid questions. I don't have a lounge button over here. Yeah, I don't think any of us. Um, Itachi has one? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I do. That's a uh, real thing. Yeah. That's right. ROV pilots, the, they, yeah, I think he's sense. coming from Data Lab. That's right, yeah. Yeah, we're not allowed to hype all the pilots in the lounge, otherwise we would be down there <laughs> off ship. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> but you can talk on SPL. Yeah. That doesn't that's like a indirect way. Right, right, right. Is there anything on the ROVs that record sound under the water? Or in the ocean? Uh, not on Herc at the moment. We have had hydrophones on here though. If you had hydrophones on Herc, wouldn't you just pick up Herc sound? Unless there's another organism uh, swimming well by I that guess has it's sounds. More word. Uh, maybe not on this vehicle. I'm sorry, I'm confused. Uh, no, we've had them on other vehicles, and they have um, the software has uh, you can filter out the. I see. Have you guys ever gone swimming with animals um, um, in the ocean that make sounds? Have you guys ever heard them before? I've heard like parrot fishes yeah. munching on coral and stuff. Really? Oh what does that sound like? Crunch. Cr crunch, crunch, crunch. Yeah. Parrot fishes eating coral. Yeah. And are the one are those the ones that poop sand? Yeah. Uhus. 
think so. And do they have like human like teeth? Yeah, yeah, they have like um, weird human teeth. That's that's the. Mu. Oh. Mu? I don't know. Kumo or Mu. Hey, Mu, oh yeah. Hey, Mu, na mo, you know, in na mo, moya, na mo, no, 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 Yeah, similar things to this. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Whoa. That's crazy looking. What's happening? Palaxi. Anybody else heard any other fishes while they're swimming? I heard whales one time when I was swimming. That's pretty cool. That's we were cool. actually recording um, stuff with a GoPro. We're just like having fun in the waves, and like when we we're watching the videos, you could hear the whales in it. Wow! Yeah, it was pretty cool. I was um, in Maui. Maui, what is that called? Not Maui County, but. Were you watching the waves there, Dan? No, I'm trying to figure out what's where it was. Oh, a whale had there. just washed up back home on mm. one of our reefs. Or not on a reef. Saipan? Yeah, or I don't know if it was Saipan. It looked, oh yeah, it was. Because you could see the other island behind it. But um, here, let me show you. What are the protocols? Cool. Yeah. Do, you, do you guys have any protocols when there's a um, whale beaching? Is it? Was it the alive last one we had dead? was like maybe 10 years ago, so I'm not too sure what the case is really. That's crazy. Here. Wait, there's another. Really? Botryoidal rock here. Botryoidal rock. Mm -hmm. That sort of bumpy texture. Oh my goodness. Honestly. So that, the. The water between our island and our neighboring island is kind of a channel for a lot of the whales. So we get a, a lot of, not a lot, but they primarily wash on the south side. Wow. You guys don't do anything with them? I'm sure they do, but they kind of like block it off to the public. So I'm not too sure what they do. Yeah. Um Whales can be very dangerous because all the sharks come by to feed on the washed up whales. So it's, um, we try to make sure that public stays away from our, our whales that wash up. And then there's a lot of cultural yeah. significance, um, Hawaiian cultural significance towards, maybe you can talk about it. I feel like you would know a whole lot more than I do. Um, so usually they take the whales out to sea when they wash up. Um, but recently, but there's there is a little group called Kiai Kanaloa, which means to protect Kanaloa. Um, one of our yeah. <laughs> but um, recently there's a whale that actually washed up on Kauai, and because one of their old tri or there's an old story that talks about one of a village bringing a whale in so that one of their liwahine could eat its eyeball. Um, so they kind of practiced that again. Um, and they, the whale was already decomposed, but they moved all the bones into a little bay called Pila. Yeah. Whales can actually explode too. From They're bloated. The gases that sort of come about as from all the things decomposing them. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. Gases can be produced as a metabolic byproduct, and then. I think I've seen a video. Or or did you ever see the video? This is an old video from like 40 the years dynamite. ago. Just thinking the same yeah, thing. That, uh, <laughs> a gray whale beached, uh, washed up on the Oregon coast. And uh, it's like, how do you get rid of this thing? So somebody got the brilliant idea of putting in too much dynamite. And there's there's footage of this reporter standing there going, you know, the whale washed up behind us and they're going to blow it up. And all of a sudden, three, two, one, boom. Yeah. And oh they gosh. had whale blubber that was a half a mile away. Blew it, yeah. dented a car, took a windshield out. Oh, my, oh my gosh. Oh, yeah, it's, it's on YouTube. Yeah, there's a 
there's like local news footage from the time. It's yeah, pretty, I, I was a kid wild. when I was a kid when that happened, and I just remember they played that tape over and over and over and over again. Little viral, viral video for us, huh? <laughs> are we um, are we looking for anything in particular over here? Like a, a I know we just gathered a rock for Val, but um, for Beth. No, Beth doesn't need a sample till that waypoint on the top of that knoll. What is that waypoint six? Once we reach the waypoint, then we want to keep our eyes out for for rocks. I don't think we'll hit that waypoint on our watch. We're gonna make Push it. it. <laughs> we're manifesting. We're gonna make it. We're uh, manifesting. We're gonna have. We're gonna manifest the currents. Help us get there safely. Maybe if you manifest like a tsunami. <laughs> I think I just <laughs> I didn't hear, but I honestly don't know if I want to hear what you just said, so it's okay. We're 1,000 meters away. You're going to have to manifest oh, yeah, a, that's far. a very big wave to get us there. I'm about to leave my seat. <laughs> <laughs> I was outside of Maui in the channel between Maui, um, Koholawe, and Molokai when we were just, um, we were in the lee of Maui Island and uh, we we're about to enter the wind, <laughs> the wind tunnel again. So it was nice and calm and we actually saw the whales swimming by. Aww. So we stopped the, end, the, we stopped the boat that we we're on and a bunch of us were able to jump into the water. But um, at the surface of the water, you cannot hear it. You kind of have to dive deeper into the, like, deeper into the water to be able to hear them. And that was really, really cool to hear. That's cool. Yeah. We didn't actually swim to them because that's not allowed. I don't, I want to make sure, don't swim to the, to the, to yeah. any big sea creatures. Yeah. yeah. Don't do that. I was, uh, during undergrad, I did a study abroad in Australia and it was on the Great Barrier Reef and we had a um, mother humpback and her calf sort of swim right by us and someone I was with got some like really cool GoPro footage of it. Oh my oh gosh. gosh. So cool. have it I could show you. Oh yes. Yes please. My friend works on a boat um, for the tours and stuff mm -hmm. but he, he was telling me that um, the babies are really curious so they'll like try and swim up to the boat mm -hmm. but the mom will kind of like make sure she's in between the boat and the baby so the baby doesn't get too close. Mm -hmm. Dolphins too. They're fun to they're listen fun. to. They come right up, yeah. Yeah, they're, they're super fun. I haven't... Can you put I Argus back in the bottom on there for me? Off the top of my head, I cannot remember hearing them. Give my neck or I don't think I've ever heard them. <laughs> what are these um, orange either. corals, Ryan? They're based on other zooms we've done, I bet uh, they're Plexarids. I can't Plexarids? look over there either. Is there like a <laughs> specific name or is it the general term? I can hear you. Swiftia. Or Swiftia. That's what we're thinking based on zoom. Do you ever look at Argus in that one? Some zooanthids no, on kind of rock. Hmm. Cup coral. How are you doing over there, Dwight? I'm okay. Am I off mute? Yeah. The mute Bridge button. The I can hear you. <laughs> Four zero south, please. Figured it out. We picked our dive for tomorrow, sort of. Not quite done yet, but trying to make the last one a good one. And 
we were looking at the the flighter mouse zoo uh, zooms for this dive. Paul, have trying you heard to find Rennie talk about more these interesting chairs? place to go? Because mm -hmm. this is kind of yeah, he's obsessed so -so. with them. They're like and, 800 um, bucks a pop. Val's on the next watch, so we were looking at that in detail oh, of how, she, how she might yeah. go differently. Oh no, these ones sounds good. Yeah. The Herc chairs, the, the 12 to 4 watch is up having their snacks are, yeah. in the galley, <laughs> in the mess. Um, video one, video two. They're like a gaming mouse chair. What, kind what of, do you mean? I don't know, that's how I think um, of them, is they're super fancy. adjustable. I think I, it's... I'm plugged into video two. Okay. Oh, wait, table, sorry. <laughs> table one. Yes. Yes, um, I just updated the whiteboard. We are going to map for eight hours. We're going to recover at noon, map for eight hours, yeah. and then dive again at 8 p.m. Yep, and that'll be the last Have launch. you pitched that? 16-hour dive. Have you pitched this so idea? it'll go till noon the next day. Yep. <laughs> Got one rock, right? Yes. Yeah. Nice job. It's a little large. <laughs> we'll see. It's Not as big the as the other one, though. Not quite. No. It was honestly the smallest one that we could find. <laughs> <laughs> the one Dan picked up last watch was... Uh, 34 pounds. Wow. <laughs> How many oh. stones is that? Yeah, what are we at now? <laughs> our, our rock total is... Actually, I'm going to take... That was my sample, but Dan just uh, gave me the confidence that it would fit. Oh, that's right. It's all about confidence. Maybe we need to make those bio box <laughs> compartments smaller. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy your I dinner. I thought you were going to say bigger. <laughs> No more collecting rocks that can't fit in the rock saw. <laughs> well, then we need a bigger rock saw. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Come on. How do you guys feel about that saying, go big or go home? I think I, I would prefer to go big time. during the cruise, get a bunch of big rocks, and then we'll go home. <laughs> 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 Okay, that's how Paul feels. There's really not much of an option to go home right now. We're pretty far <laughs> from home, you know? So I guess we got to go big. There's several rocks that are so big that we're looking at places in Honolulu that can cut them <laughs> for us. <laughs> Looks like a little dead piece of... I have to dynamite one like the whale on the beach in Oregon. I can cut it in half or if it won't fit on the rock saw. I'm a diamond blade for the uh, Makita. Was that the one that someone went and tipped over on purpose? Wasn't there an Oregon rock, like a Bridge, this is that famous rock somebody south, pushed please. over? Yeah. <laughs> I think I saw that. It's Those are some good looking west. rocks over here. But no. Dad, what did you suggest to cut with? Uh, I have a Diablo blade on the Makita that I don't Cut through that rock. How long would it take? Huh? Oh, it'll, it'll zing right through it. Oh. There you go. I cut cement and stucco with them all the time. Okay. Well, not all the time. But what if we just use crane to time. pick up big rocks and, you know, <laughs> smash, smash them? <laughs> 9.8 meters <laughs> per second squared. That would, I feel like that would hurt the deck I more know. than anything else, the poor deck. 
I think another option would be drill an anchor into each side of the rock and then have the two cranes play tug of war. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great idea. I love how we're coming up with all these theories on how to cut the big rocks so that we don't have to go home because we just asked to go big or go home. <laughs> I think with Paul's idea, we could get a reality TV show too, you know? <laughs> don't people pay to watch like trucks do tug of war? Yeah. yeah. We should have a crew tug of war. Yeah, we should like strap in with and then like run in opposite directions. <laughs> that sounds like a really good idea on an oily deck. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Oh man, they'll be like Squid Games. <laughs> I have yet to watch that, so oh, I'll just be sitting Spoiling. here lost be if fitting. you guys are about to go into a squid bank. Befitting the ocean. Yeah. <laughs> You know, although it is very sparse um, and we're not seeing a whole lot of life compared to other dives right now, there's still life. Like, nonetheless, there's still corals here and there that are yeah. making their... And if you think, like, over the bus, camera you know, however many hours, we've seen a lot of different things. So totally. Still a good amount of diversity. Yeah, di diversity. Let's go over some of the names. Uh, Swiftia. <laughs> Swiftia. Uh, Hemicorallium, bamboo corals. Hemicorallium. What about Spundus. you, Ipo? You remember one one word? One what's one organism that you remember from this dive, or maybe like from the scientific name or just whatever name that you probably know? I know what a crinoid is. There you go. Yeah. All right. The sea star. Bubblegum coral. Bubblegum coral. Please remind me of the scientific name of the bubblegum coral. Par Paragorgia. 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 And one of the challenges with underwater is that you never know what you miss just like 50 meters to one side of you, you know? True. Yeah. Two meters to one side of you. Yeah. One of the big uh, challenges in some of the work I do is you have to know where things are, but it's also pretty important to build like habitat models for organisms to know where they aren't. And defining mm. where something isn't is really difficult in the deep sea because the only way we see the deep sea floor is, you know, camera, and as anything could be directly out of frame or whatnot. So really, defining where something isn't is really hard to do in the deep sea. Yeah, what is that? It's a sponge. Walteria? Not so hairy? So. No, it's not, not like uh, doesn't it? Bridge a, Nev? It's not like a vase. Uh, four zero meters south, please. Looks like more platey, thin. I'm an interesting rock formation. Yeah. Hey, sponge. No, hi. Sponge. Who are who akai? Who akai? Who e? Who e It's a large rock there. <laughs> Hello. A sample. Sample that. Sounds like we need to make an expedition on trying to see the biggest rock that we can collect and cut on board. <laughs> so didn't, what did they collect from the um, Endeavor vent field? Some gigantic piece of a chimney with the Tommy Thompson and Jason, I think. A whole chimney? Yeah. Wow. Huge piece. I really what? remember how they did it. Post. Uh, was it Ropos that did it? Yeah, John yeah. Delaney, Ropos. Yeah, Del I knew it was Fisher. Delaney. Where'd they put it? Is it in uh, at Smith UW? It's at the Smithsonian. Uh, uh, was it? I've never seen that on, a, on exhibit. There's a YouTube on it. I, I, may, I'm not sure if it's on YouTube. There's a video floating around of it, though. Do they bring it up, like, in the arms? No, they They had to a attach a yeah. lift line to it, right? Oh. They, and they used a crane, a uh, barge crane, right? Wow. Look at they that rock. The, it's very different compared to the other rocks. Uh, it was right. a joint effort with the Tully and uh, Thompson. 
Tully and the Thompson. Wow. Yeah, I think they pulled it onto the Tully and the vehicles around the Thompson. You see the uh, winch in the A-frame. I see. Wow. And it caught on fire. <laughs> the, the winch oh, caught on fire? Uh, they had some pieces That's in a box. And on the Tully, right? Yeah, it exo -thermed. I heard about that. Wow. I have the video somewhere. I don't know if I have it with me. They're all so young. It's great. There's a bunch of kids out there. I wonder yeah, if they can cut that. They on Ropos. They, they put this big <laughs> contraption over the chimney with the, all these rings. Rigged it all up and then had a chainsaw on Ropos and cut through it. Oh, that's wild. That is crazy. What is this called where we keep all these channels? What KVM? Is this? KVM. This is a KVM. Uh, intercom. For talking, you mean? Yeah. Oh, okay. Intercom. Sorry. Intercom. Yeah, I find it very interesting that you could, you could be op openly talking to anybody, but just choose to listen to one person. So you could be like talking over people, but you would never hear it if you don't have the intercom open for listening to any of them. Another slime star. Slimy star. That's the third one that we've seen on our watch, I feel. Yeah. yeah. They were seeing them earlier, too. So Zoom on the slime star. I wonder why that specific one is so abundant here. It's that red thing. We use it differently. Jeff can tell you it's in a production environment. It's really for listen for most people to listen only, and only a few people really talk, right? Mm. Do yeah. we still think Kahiyang. the first one of these slime stars was potentially a uh, new species, the one that we sampled? Uh, yes. The white one? Yep. Okay. On. Do these um, kind of starfish eat coral too? Bridge, Nev. I'm not sure. Four they zero meters south, please. Probably not a whole lot of other stuff for them to eat here. Hmm? There's not much else for them to eat here, so yeah. you would think. Certain sea stars are filter feeders also, too, yeah? Yeah, Brazingids, for example. And then basket stars? Mm -hmm. Basket stars that blow my mind. That was a great highlight of that giant sea star eating that red coral. Yeah, mm. yeah. really mm -hmm. cool. So I think our watch has had some of the best highlights, the, right? Oh, we're, yeah. We're getting the most YouTube hits oh. <laughs> compared to all the watches. And that's right. really what it's mm. all about. King George and the highlight reel. <laughs> <laughs> As we traverse through King George Seamount. Slurp Team Sick. What was that? <laughs> Slurp Team Sick. <laughs> <six. laughs> Can we take a look at that? Yeah, go ahead, Jeff. Zoom in there. It almost looks like it's so thin, it almost looks like it's like fossilized into the rock. Obviously, totally. isn't, but. Wow. This is a brittle star? I can, uh, maybe a Brazingit, I think. Brazingit. But it looks different than the Brazingit we've been seeing. It's definitely a sea star. There looks like a tiny little coral that's forming over there, but I cannot confidently what did you tell you. Call it? Uh, Brazingit? Okay, yep. we're still moving it uh, half a knot. It's Thank you for a that. a bit steeper here, so I don't have quite as much time. Oh, we can slow a down a bit rock. if you want. ID. ID. Uh, Brazingit. Sea star. Brazingit. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you just made that word up, Ryan. <laughs> so wait, <laughs> were you asking or was she asking? No, I, I can see, I see her typing it and just... Yeah, that's oh, sorry. Wrong. <laughs> no, I'm just, that's it's an uh, ID. <laughs> Helping us, yeah. yeah. Think with a D on the end. Yeah, Don't D at the end, and then you got it. Any. Yeah. D, I got it. No T, girl. Instead of the T. Oh. There it is. Got it. The struggles of not learning <laughs> traditional I English know. at our schools. <laughs> Terrible. Slow down to a point three, Katachi. Project. Rich, this is Nev. Can you bring our speed down to 0.3 knots, please? 
I sometimes wish I could have a tutor that would teach me English <laughs> and math. Say? Keep coming up, pump, going vertical. Someone is saying that we get the best zooms on polyps and corals. Come up this so that plays a big role too. Yeah. Yep. Shout out to our pilots and Jeff. Yeah. 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 Totally. To the Pailaka Mokulu Ukia Awaya, Dan and Paul, and then our Mea Pai Viki Jeff. Okay, you can hold that. You guys are amazing. We're not afraid to go tight. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Gotta see those polyps. Can I have my notebook, please? Yeah. Thank you. I feel like this watch has the most experienced crew and then the least experienced <laughs> of us. <laughs> what are you saying? I'm old saying guy, that you guys know. crew? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying that we can pull off these amazing shots because you guys really know your stuff. <laughs> Thank but you. I Thank guess, you I guess you could put it <laughs> that way too. Interesting. <laughs> experienced. Huh? Bridge, this is nice. Wave. Another four zero south. Mr. Lomi, m Mr. Lomi, Lomi, Lomi. <laughs> Rather than <laughs> Mrs. Lomi, Lomi, Lomi. <laughs> Mommy, Lomi, Lomi. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Tomorrow we'll get the summit. Yeah, awesome. tomorrow will be interesting. And we should have plenty of bottom time because it's so shallow. It's a 720 meters. Yeah. Plenty of what time? Bottom time. Bottom time. Yeah. So we, yeah, we don't have to, it'd only take less than an hour to come up, so. Right, our blue water time oh, yeah. will just be trying to make sure our connections are all correct and next thing you know, we're, we're ready. Everyone try and manifest stony corals. Stony corals, <laughs> manifesting stony corals. Manifesting uh, cup corals. Because eh. they are stony corals. They are, yeah. There's not a lot of boulder corals down here, I noticed. Mm -mm. Boulder corals. Hoping for lots of fish. Fishy fish. Fishies. Fishes, yes. So this will be shallower. We were at 860 on Nootka, I think. So this will be 760, you said, Katachi? Yeah. It's yes, uh, 720, actually. 720. Nice. Did I hear you were seeing, like, fish schools in the multi-beam? Yeah. Um, the, the water column feature of the multi-beam was imaging what looked to be, or could be, schools of fish. Interesting. But that's from last, that's from last fall, not this most recent. Can we take a look there? Most recent. This thing. Right, go ahead, Jeff. You and I like reached for it at the same time. Yeah, we know. It's so tiny. Oh, interesting. It looks like an okay, Ocala. A bit more. Don't think we've seen it this does. yet. Anemone. Huh. Looks like an eyeball. Oh, it's that species they tried to get Malanai to pronounce. <laughs> oh. so, new, new type of animal. Is that the one? <laughs> I don't remember that. <laughs> don't. Is that in the family genus? <laughs> <laughs> I think it is, Paula. Great memory. <laughs> I hope whoever that is is listening. Still haven't figured it out. 
didn't know what Katashi was getting at at first. I was like, no, I don't remember that. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like Ryan got fooled twice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not reading the comments. A smart man. Looks like a tiny little anemone tucked away down there and that. Oh yeah. Be a great opportunity to zoom on its coral yeah, disc there and see if we can. Push in a bit more. <laughs> Not a tube anemone. Another tube an enemy, you said? No, not a tube an enemy. Not a tube an enemy, Roger. Interesting. Great, thanks. It's kind of like fire. You could just, just stare at it for a really long time and just be mesmerized. in the guide, but not ID best anemone, basically, so. Mystery. Rich, this is Nev. It's a Another mystery. Another 40 south, please. What's our distance from waypoint six now? We are just under about 190. Oh, not bad. Okay. Almost made it. Yeah, we made some good progress. I always think about how it's like one thing to learn how to operate certain machinery, but nothing beats just getting in there and just driving it yourself and gaining the, the on hands, hands on experience that um, makes you better at what you do, like driving ROVs, understanding each, um, each of these organisms that we're identifying. I feel like that's the best and easiest way to learn sometimes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Hands on. Taste test. Mm. Taste <laughs> test. That's a good way to put it. My um, my colleague uh, likes to talk about um, hands on is minds on whenever we're teaching the kids. That's a good one. Talking good to them expression. is like one way, but then when you have their hands working and doing whatever yeah. we're trying to teach them is like even better. It's like connecting all the dots. Definitely. Interesting, like holes in the rock all around here. Yeah. This makes me really want to understand the kind of reef that is underneath certain surf spots. 
and there's rock and the rocks because some surf spots have like it's rock that's a little similar to what we're looking at right now and some surf spots are all reef mm. and then there's surf spots that have caves and then people can get stuck underneath the caves because if you eat it if you eat it real good with a wave and it sucks you oh to the yeah. bottom of the ocean and it tosses you underneath a cave and you don't know what way is up and down and you're underneath yeah. the cave and you're just trying to get to the surface that's a whole nother level of excitement has that, has that happened to you before it happened to my grandfather Whoa. He got sucked yeah. into a cave. He got sucked, and, and I know that there's other surfers that have got sucked into caves. Oh my! Yeah. Did your grandfather like swim out? He was able to find his way. I think he was able to find his way. Yeah. Quick swim yeah. there, Jeff. Looks like a cup carl, but maybe I don't know. Now it looks like a sea anemone. Yeah, I think anemone. Well, at least we got one sample this watch. Want to right. get a quick slurp on something? Yeah. <laughs> <coughs> Hello. Okay, I'm gonna. Okay, bye bye, everybody. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that was fast. <laughs> we have a watch change. Oh. 12 to 4 coming in. All right. 8 to 12, signing off. For those of you just joining us, we are uh, diving with ROV's Hercules in Atalanta on the King George Seamount, which is a GIGO, a flat top seamount. Uh, we started at a depth of 2,500 meters and we have ascended up to a depth of 
1,425 meters so far, and we're climbing up this ridge. We expect to end at around 700 meters if all goes as, as planned. seen the water temperature rise about a degree since we started at the bottom. It's still pretty cold at 2.86 degrees Celsius. Oxygen is dropping as we move into the oxygen limited zone. We expect that to continue until we start getting closer to the surface. It uh, up at up. six. Okay, we will see if we can find anything there for her. Okay, cool. Yeah, we'll keep an eye out. Thank you. So the, the 12 to 4 watch just came on. We'll be with you for the next four hours. Oh, you're fine. All right. Uh, new watch, new day. Um, <clears throat> New day. Did we had a little weather outside. The decks were wet. It rained. <laughs> <laughs> Val, you want to give us a rundown of what kind of rock faces we're Back row? seeing here? Yes, this is enough. Uh, just to confirm, would you like to go s now straight south to this area? And then once we reach this contour, then start heading towards waypoint six. Um, could we move a little bit more southwest and kind of hug the side of the ridge as we go up? Uh, so you'd like to go this way? Yeah, that would be perfect. Okay, like right. like this, right? Yeah. Okay. All right, thanks. <clears throat> so let's go two one zero. Two one zero. Hey, I'm almost here. No, Shall not. I move in uh, 20 meter steps or 30? Okay. Speed. Quite a bit. We're not quite Until this halfway one? through. So it's almost uh, 700 meters. Uh, there's not a whole lot to see here, so I am in favor of speeding things up a little bit. So 30 meter, point three. Let's start. 210. Bridge, this is Nav. Good morning. Uh, can we move the ship on bearing 210? 30 meters, speed 0 0.3 knots, please. Affirmative. Thank you. About to go off of auto iris, so it might dramatically change. Thank you for letting me know, Roger. Oh, that's pretty that's dramatic. dramatic. <laughs> there you go. Uh, Atalanta isn't going to change, though. Oh, Roger. Roger. Roger that. It's already on manual. <laughs> Just setting, Thank you. setting it up. <laughs> 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 Got to keep ourselves alive here. <laughs> Four hours. <laughs> I'm getting longer. Yeah, that's why I bring up a sippy cup full of coffee. It's a good move. I love that it's a sippy cup. Well, it's one of those caps that like pops it's, open and it like it's you know, a very it's adult still yeti, resistant. But I like that you call it a sippy cup. <laughs> it's basically an adult <laughs> sippy cup. <laughs> it is. It is. You know, I think that's a great move. I think it that's is. exactly what I wish I had. Thinking about it. Hey, back row. Quick question for you. Okay. Front row. How many rock samples? How many are big? We have <laughs> three rock samples, and two of them are the ones that we collected. Oh, okay. Uh, nice. Actually, there's also the, the one in the front that we collected. So there's only been one since, and it's an E, so something tells me it's probably big. larger. <laughs> but yeah, let's see what size estimate they gave it. It's okay. a chonker. 
<laughs> it's a chonker. Roger. Roger, Roger. Yeah. Um, once we get to the top of waypoint six, uh, if the rocks allow, um, we'll be on the lookout for a sample for Beth. Uh, it's about where she, uh, about the depth where she wants to uh, grab another rock. Roger that. So okay. If we see something suitable, if not, we'll uh, we'll move on. Okay. Sounds good. Um, but okay, maybe potential large rock in E. Yeah, I don't really believe the size estimate on this paper. I feel like it must be larger. So they were talking about whether or not it fit. So then it must be larger than 10 by 14 centimeters. Which makes me a little nervous. Okay, yeah, <laughs> I'll see how we float, and if we need to, I'll throw one of the weights. Okay, this sounds, good. sounds good. This rock's name is King George. <laughs> <laughs> is that is that what they named it? Oh, my oh gosh. I'm just yeah. saying, yeah. the oh. seamount is gone. It's a really big rock. <laughs> just a <laughs> whole seamount. Yeah. <laughs> we just brought the whole seamount. <laughs> it's, it's a great sign for your joke if you have to explain it afterwards. <laughs> I'm so sorry. It's so the caffeine is still we're, kicking in. Yeah, we're still warming up a little bit. <laughs> Literally, it was it was a little chilly in the lounge. Yeah, it was. Gotta go outside, yeah. nice and warm. Yep. Actually, Data Lab wasn't too bad either. That now humid turn 80 degrees that makes me feel like I'm at home. Florida. <laughs> Val, can you tell us about the rocks that we're seeing right now? Uh oh, right. Thank you, Christopher, for the reminder. Um. Yeah, uh, these are a fairly extensive stack of lava flows, also fairly extensively covered in uh, ferromanganese crust, which is making them extremely difficult to sample. Because, um, yeah, everything is <laughs> basically growing with this crust around, and it's all just stuck. Do you? Oh, I can't do this right now. This was you. <laughs> What? I'm tired. I've had a very long day. I've been up since like 8 a.m. Yeah. And I processed a lot of rocks. <laughs> you did, and we packed up so many of them. Got we them have out so many the, more on the floor the now. Lab. That's right. That's good. What's our weight now in rocks? Um, too high. <laughs> we have Bridge, this is now another uh, move. Same step. <laughs> well, Val has the giggles. <laughs> 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 Suleiman, would you mind zooming out to look at what they labeled the last sample ID? Sure. <clears throat> one six seven, and it was. They did one six seven. Okay, perfect. Yes. Thank you. All right. So uh, rocks we've collected as of uh, dive nineteen twenty four. We have two hundred fifty five point six kilograms. Oh, we. It is a lot of kilograms. That's a lot of kilograms. Oh, something's hovering up in the up in the water column. An Atlanta cam, upper left, but oh, now it's bottom left. Fish. It kind of keeps flowing in and out. Oh yeah, I'm seeing like little glimpses of it. Didn't get a great look at it. Yeah, I saw something really indistinct. That was it. Oh, that's a creepy look. Well, somebody's asking if this is called pillow lava. Um, this doesn't look like obvious pillow <coughs> lava morphology here. Uh, it looks like uh, once we hit somewhere a little below waypoint five, uh, when I was uh, kind of keeping tabs from the lounge, um, we went from the pillow lavas that we were seeing a lot of uh, earlier this dive, uh, I kind of transitioned into these wider, flatter flows that were more lobate. And then this seems more like either lobate or sheet flow. It's it's a little bit hard to tell through uh, the crust because the uh, manganese crust looks pretty thick here. Just kind of how it's like uh, uh, sort of covering up some features and making everything look what a little like poofier. Kind of like icing on a cake. You, when you mess up the cake, you just smear the icing on it. You can't yeah. tell. <laughs> yeah, there's cake under there somewhere. And again, we got these uh, kind of like pukas, these holes in the crust. It's not quite the same as what we saw yesterday, but um, it is reminiscent of that. No, I don't know how they're formed. <laughs> <clears throat> 
I have a question about the footage that we take, and uh, the viewer wants to know if it comes under the Creative Commons Act. Um, <coughs> it, it is all publicly available, but um, it is accredited to, to Ocean Exploration Trust and to the funders of this expedition. I know sometimes other websites, I think Nerdist took one of our videos and sort of re reboosted it recently, and uh, Maybe Newsweek. I saw a few other yeah, media which is outlets. Totally excellent. Yeah. So, but they do uh, credit us for the video. What is that weird thing way over? You can see it on the big screen. That oh, the ball poopy thing. thing. Yeah, it's oh, a ritigorgia, yeah. I think, over there. Oh, is it? <laughs> We've been seeing a lot of ritigorgia that loom in the back as if they're going to be sponges. A lot it's of metallic yeah, sharp eye, Jess. Yeah. Yeah. Would you mind switching this over to near good? Um, actually, I think I want to stay even further upslope than you, Kylie. I'll just lateral along a bit. I don't like how it's like so close on the sonar. Do you want me to keep this heading, or can I change it? Yeah, if you want to look a little bit more into the slope. Yeah. We never did come up with a list of theme songs for Make our watch. another move. You happy yes. with it? Yep. Yes, please. Press this is now. Another move. Same step. I'm still, I'm still thinking about the whole Ode to Chana Cops concept. <laughs> Tell me more. I'm interested. I don't know. Leela and I were thinking uh, Shakespearean solilo uh, solilo uh, yeah. soliloquy. We only remember the first line <laughs> of any soliloquy, so it's um, just... This, this was the famous uh, Romeo and Juliet one. Uh, Come on, you gotta remember the first line. Chana cops, oh Chana cops. <laughs> Wherefore art thou, Chana cops? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and then what? I don't know. We should pull it. We should pull up the soliloquy and start thinking. <laughs> we should do that. Whether it is nobler to uh, zoom yes, or. Go. Oh <laughs> my gosh. What light through yonder <laughs> ROV wakes? Yes. Wow. Wow. Okay, everyone knows. Tis the Chana cops. <laughs> hey, man, crowdsource it. It is the. What light through yonder flashlight? Uh, breaks. It is the chana. It is the up and chana cups is the ROV. I don't know. <laughs> so we're almost there. Okay. We're getting there. We gotta we're workshop, workshop it a little. Okay, workshop right, a little. Right. I'm pulling it open. Chris, you should be able to edit us into something really amazing. You do the slam poetry, right? I do. Yes, you gotta you gotta bring us home. I think we got the dream team here. <laughs> yeah, we need we need you to save us. Really so like, in our ideas. Am I like the van dad? I'm gonna turn this bus around. <laughs> You're gonna edit you us kids. into a great soliloquy. This is not the kind of van with the transmission. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Chris, you wanna tell us more about the poem that you just got published today? Oh, Ooh. yeah, I just got a, a poem accepted by, uh, what's the, I think it's called Bureau of Complaints. And they, <laughs> they, Amazing. they only take poems where you're like complaining about things. Oh, that's so great. That's so fantastic. I, a, I like that it's a bureau. Yeah, that's the... Very official. What did, it. What did you complain about? Um, teaching. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yes. His co-workers. <laughs> yeah. No, this watch. not my co-workers. You pulled from a deep pool <laughs> of inspiration, I believe. <laughs> Yeah, congratulations. You want to hear my poem? Yes, 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 yes. yes, yes. yes. Right, it's, slam poetry It's time. a slam poem, so it's like three minutes yes. long, so it's not like a little short guy. I, th I, oh, I think we've okay. got three minutes and not much I to look at. I have at, four so. hours. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, don't look at anything interesting for the next three minutes. Um, i got to call it up on my phone. I think that will be easy, property. actually. <laughs> <laughs> don't call in any moves or make a big move right now. Do not interrupt the slam. Okay. No. Talk, off that, talk off that spiel if you make a move. Secretly. Make sure they're listening up on the bridge. <laughs> yeah. Oriel, are you listening? Uh, my phone is not letting me into. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Amazing. <laughs> It sounded like he raced over to the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> right. Sorry. For people listening we, we, we on SDL. 
<laughs> better get it in now. Yeah. <laughs> get it Are in you now. ready, Chris? <laughs> All right. Oh, one minute. Bridge, this is Nav. Another move, same step. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go. <laughs> For people listening on SPL, Oriel is not in this room with us. He's driving the ship. Yes. <laughs> Correct. Yes. All right, here's my poem. Okay. Let X equal the number of days of school before summer vacation. Let Y equal the severity of the behavior problems. Attempt to graph Y as a function of X. Never mind, don't. Someone has put all your graph paper in the science lab sink and turned on the faucet during the one period you had a sub. You know, the sub who chose not to follow that lesson plan. You know, the one who spent, the one you spent an hour getting ready instead of eating or reading the email. <laughs> you know, that one email that will keep you from sleeping tonight oh as God. you formulate all the things you wish you could have said in response to that fire-spitting parent, but oh. no, you shouldn't. If A is the number, uh, the temperature of the classroom with no AC in June, hmm. and B is the square root of the number of times they have asked to open the windows when they are already open, <laughs> <laughs> calculate the maximum number of times a class of 20 eighth graders can tell me how hot it is in a single class period, given four of them are absent every other day and will still be allowed to graduate despite failing all of their classes, because they're <laughs> the high, school prob high school's problem now, and maybe we're every bit as horrible as those parents say we are. <laughs> Let Q be fatigue. Let Z be the sum total of how much sleep we should have gotten this week. Correlate it to the graph of cuss words directed at us versus cuss words shouted at other students in the hallway. Once you dry out the graph paper from the sink, and if the p-value isn't less than 0.05, it's a million. What? There must be a better way to explain that writer's cramp than all the detention slips you've been drafting. Some days you forget to tell them to wear sunscreen on field day because there's just so much going on, but other days, maybe it's subconsciously vindictive, hoping they will spend their final days in the classroom too crisp to move a muscle. But of course, <laughs> teachers would never do something like that. <laughs> or would they? <laughs> let R be your blood pressure, and let L be the time the liquor store closes today. Let F be the average grade on the last test. And no, that wasn't a variable. It was open notes. We went over all the questions and, and their answers in the previous class, and they still couldn't pass it. <laughs> let M be the number of passes to the nurse this week. Not because they are ill, but because the nurse's office is air-conditioned, and you do the math. <laughs> I'd say you could use a calculator, but someone has punched out all the little solar panels, pushed them deep inside each device, the batteries have all drained, and the one functional battery-powered oddball was submerged over the weekend in a thousand milliliter beaker of what I hope was water, just to see what it would do. <laughs> Let T be the reason we can't have nice things. <laughs> Every year is an asymptote where we get closer and closer to summer vacation, but never quite relax. Someone called this a noble profession once. Really, I set them straight. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. Yeah, that I love great. that. That was yeah, my poem. Yeah, so good. That yeah. was really good. <laughs> so, Christopher, how does this getting accepted play uh, into your goal this year, though? Oh, uh, so my goal this year is to get 100 rejections, um, so, which means I, 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 I get... Most poets get rejected way more than they get accepted in things, so it's not like a, I'm particularly bad at poetry, I, but I do get a lot of rejections, but it's only because I keep throwing my work out there for different things. And yeah. so I got like 20 acceptances last year, give or take. Wow. Oh wow. That's nice. So, that's um, awesome. But I, I didn't quite make 100 rejections because um, there's a lot of places that just hadn't gotten back to me by January 1st. And yeah. so um, I... Uh, I've been reaping the benefit of those toward my 100 rejections. I don't know what number I'm at right now, but um, I guess I'm a good probably 30 rejections into the year. So I think I'll hit it this year. That is fantastic. I really love, though, that you're like, I only get those rejections because I, I put out my work so often. That's a really great way to look at it. Yeah. Well, that's, that's wonderful. Oh, hey, it's a living thing. Look at that. What's this purple <laughs> friend? It's alive. I think there's, where's the purple? Chemicorallium. Chemicorallium. Oh, there's a, an anthemastis on the rock. Yeah, it does look slightly purple there. Oh, there's the purple thing. There. And there's a mushroom coral there. It's a mushroom coral, yeah. Oh, yeah, I was looking at the, what was it called on the, on the bottom? The oh, Chemicorallium. Chemicorallium, yeah. Do a quick same here, please. Thank you, Chris, for, for sharing yeah. that with us, by the sure. way. Sure. You're welcome. That Are you going to write one about us? Uh, I will try. I have been having the worst writer's block. Like, 
we'll wait, for a couple months now, and I figured, oh, I'll get on the ship, and I'll have all these ideas, and I have no ideas. Yeah, they'll come It'll to come you after afterwards. Hopefully, yeah, hopefully yeah, after I get back. Yeah. 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 This is time. the kind of thing you need to marinate on. Yep. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. yeah. I, I found with writer's block, um, I mean, forcing it doesn't help. Do you keep a journal, uh, Christopher? Um, I have many, 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 many poetry <laughs> journals that I begin. Very few of them are full. Um, so I like will start one, and then I'll be like, oh, hey, a new journal at the store. That sounds good. Love and that. So I own, I don't know, 20 or more that mm -hmm. have stuff written in. I've been trying to type them all up in Google Drive because looking through all my journals, looking for one specific poem is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. So I've got most of the last decade or so typed in. There's probably a few hiding out there that I haven't put in yet. Sure. Yeah, that's I, fantastic. But I probably have like, a, I think over a thousand poems probably Wow. in the can right now. That's awesome. Sure. When did Not you start yeah. getting into poetry and how? Um, I started writing poetry, I mean, in high school, I guess, but um, I didn't do any performance until uh, about 16, 17 years ago. I was working at a a high school and uh, they had this outdoor event that the students were leading and you could go to different like electives and I had to chaperone the, the poetry one and I brought a couple of my poems and uh, you know nobody ever had really read them and um, the student got up and did this amazing slam poem like from memory just very impassioned about uh, her experience working at a nursing home and I was like how you know where did you learn to do that you know definitely not at this public high school <laughs> <laughs> and uh, she's like oh yeah i go to this poetry slam venue in manchester you should check it out and she like told me about it so i went and checked it out and i n never stopped going back and now i'm like on staff and help that's run the poetry that's reading so cool. and yeah, yeah that's so awesome that's when i've been we used to have a national poetry slam the organization kind of crumbled right before covid and nobody has picked it up completely yet but i think it probably will pick up eventually but, I hope so. Um, I hope I've been does. on six poetry slam teams that have gone to nationals. Cool. Oh, that's so fantastic. We, we come in somewhere in the middle, but yeah, I'm like the still. I'm like the poetry slam member emeritus or something. In our <laughs> 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 that's amazing. So, but it's it's kind of fun. Like, I, I love the national scene because um, you get to like when you're when you're in a region, you know, everybody's poems start to kind of sound alike because they just hear each other read and think like oh this is what poetry is to me but then you you know hook up with somebody from the bay area or from texas or whatever and and hear their poems and they have a totally different approach to writing and huh wow that is awesome chris yeah. that's that's super yeah, cool so you get to cross pollinate yeah yeah and it's so cool that you know you got were exposed to that through a student that you you know yeah. can keep yeah. continue to learn from the people who and you helped to educate. She totally stopped going like right after I started going to the meeting. <laughs> oh, no. So I don't even I think I can know her, but I don't know her that well. Like she wasn't in any of my classes at school and whatever. But yeah, I like kind of found my my home turf. Yeah. And something I'm good at. So. Very cool. That was an awesome poem. That Thanks. is. All right, so we got a couple of things in the chat. Don't want to get too far behind. Uh, one question is, do we have any competitions between the, uh, the different watch teams? Can we check out over here a little bit? We were thinking about Ooh. it. <laughs> Look, it's a community. Only for the names, I think. Yeah, probably. We yeah. used to compete about who did the daisy chain the fastest. <laughs> <laughs> Annabelle and I were talking at a, on the social deck the other day about, like, doing like a, a, a building thing like okay, everyone has to build boats they have to hold a certain amount of quarters or something and like having the watch teams compete and there's oh. another one too oh the like you know people draw something on your like outline something on your back partial. and you have to draw it that's great just silly little little games It'd be fun to have a transit olympics oh that'd be cool yeah, yeah. And we have that ping pong table too and the is that a black coral in the corner? Yeah, we, yeah nice. Yeah. Good we could eye. play Petri dish uh, shuffleboard. Oh, yeah, I did see those. <laughs> and the fish wondering. game. Oh, oh, yeah, I'm oh, yeah. The fish yeah. game is Yeah, out. so no. I guess we... Yeah, all right, Raj. <laughs> um, just... Yes. Uh, got another question. Uh, have any of us ever witnessed an underwater avalanche in an ROV dive? No. No. 
No, not, not my memory. It doesn't sound uh, Hopefully good. never. Yeah, <laughs> I don't want to, yeah. When we were picking up rocks before, I was like, don't let this be the rock that is holding up this mountain. <laughs> I know, I, I had know. the same thought. Because <laughs> yeah. we were like, oh, it's so solid <laughs> before <laughs> then. <Famous laughs> All monsters. the rocks were liftable. Like Indiana <laughs> Jones, <laughs> like, ah! It's either solid or it just caved in. You just hope that rock doesn't go faster than what, 0.5 knots? <laughs> no one has been here before. We don't know that it's solid. We are going to yeah. winch up quickly. <laughs> Actually, I think it's not too much of a question how solid this stuff is. Me. I was talking to a... Oh, sure. Talking to a scientist that had been down in the Alvin to look at hydrothermal vents, and she was like, yeah, sometimes we just run over those chimneys and knock them over. They're really brittle. Well, they are. <laughs> kind of blew my mind. I'm like, oh, <laughs> scientists actually like crash into things sometimes. Oh, yeah. We sampled a bit with an ROV a few years ago uh, off of some very tall hydrothermal chimneys. And uh, yeah, they it's like you just like poke them. Yeah. And they just like, just blah, 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 they just tumble down. Crumble. Yep. They, they think they grow back pretty quickly. Yeah, they yes. do. Very yes. quickly, yeah. So Valve. Okay. Um, not that there's any actual doubt, but how do you know that uh, these places are stable when you look at them? Like, like the place we were earlier, where it was it was that slope with the um, the uh, sand or the the dust and the the rocks. Um, so with that, um, it just looked like stuff sedimented on stuff that was. You're good to go ahead. Bill. Okay. Yeah. Uh, with that stuff, keep, it was pretty moving. much. Oh, Oops. Keep moving. Pressure. This is now another problem. move. Same step. I had too many people in my ear. Um, For sure. Yeah. The uh, uh, the issue with that slope is uh, uh, it just looked like there was sediment on top of stuff yeah, for a while. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Sorry. Um, yeah. It's it's a big like steep stack of uh, pillow lavas and. They just had so much manganese crust grown on them that they're all kind of like glued into place. Uh, so you don't, it seems like we just aren't seeing a whole lot of uh, recent wasting on mm -hmm. those. Mm -hmm. Like things just aren't falling off of it and you just get sediment that settles down on them at the sediments angle of repose over time and uh, seems to be pretty stable. Right on. Yeah. Seems like you get this this manganese crust uh, growing in around here, and it seems to be crust that is pretty compact. Like, not all, not much of it is the kind of stuff that you get back to the lab, and once it dries out a little bit, it starts crumbling a whole bunch. Mm -hmm. Like I've seen that from other places, but here, this stuff is pretty high quality uh, structurally, anyway. So, um, seems to be seems to be inhibiting our sampling abilities a lot, so I'm not too worried about structural issues. For sure. Rhinoid? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I think and there's, there's a little hemi corallium in that little yeah. pocket down there. Oh, yeah. Which is small. Yeah, Christopher, something you said a few minutes ago, um, it it reminds me a lot of a uh, buddy of mine from uh, my days in Honolulu has pointed out about, you know, just kind of kind of like being happy and having you know feeling like you have your place mm. uh in life and she's like yeah i i don't know if um everybody has something that they've identified that they're really really good at because that's that's the kind of thing that like kind of drives you if you know you have some sort of talent no matter like what kind of no matter how obscure or you know maybe kind of off the wall it might seem it's really important to have that i think yeah For it's, sure, it's right? a focal point yeah. Without and that, and it's it might easy to feel kind of lost. Yeah. yeah. It might change over your lifetime. Oh, totally. Here's a halosaur. Yeah, I like, it. like it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, like when I was younger, I I, I was kind of, for a while, angling to get into a music education program mm. in college. And uh, Go to push did, on that it, didn't quite pan out. So I ended up kind of making a turn toward our sciences and eventually got into geology. And it's... It's just been like a totally different direction right, than away, I, I saw briefly when I was a teenager. It's interesting how much of an overlap there is between uh, science and music people. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Science does involve a fair amount of creativity. Yeah, totally. For sure, yeah. I write a lot of science poems. 
And a lot of merging this is now that science and that creativity step. too. Yeah. Another ritigorgia. Yeah. It's nice seeing those around. So, so sometimes to like just like kill off some stress, uh, like I, I do like little acrylic paintings and stuff at home. Mm. Oh, that's a lot awesome. of them are pretty geologically inspired or like you know planets Ooh. Just, like working on colors textures working yeah. on fine little details just the acrylic paint would be awesome for that getting yeah. all the textures and stuff too yeah it's a lot of fun it's just kind of a good way to just do something completely different that you know isn't like trying to work out technical details on a paper or something yeah yeah, yeah. 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 yeah for sure can we look right here? I'm just kind of curious. Is that's probably just a hold fast. Never mind. It just looked really yellow. Red. Oh, it's almost a green thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh. That did cross my mind. <laughs> groan. Everybody laughed before they groaned. Oh. <laughs> uh. So somebody said uh, it'd be hard to have an underwater avalanche since there's no snow underwater. And Raj. <laughs> another I mean a rock lanch. Really sure <laughs> <they're away. laughs> another comment came in that these things have been sitting here for a really long time, so if it was gonna happen it probably already would have. There can be events that set off uh erosional events though. That yep. is true. Yeah. Um, Jason's Very asking definitely. if I have a favorite musician. Do uh, you? Huh. I'm. I listen to a real eclectic mix, so mm -hmm. I have like favorites in each genre. Mm -hmm. uh, I had like one band that I like a lot is a band called Over the Rhine. They're out of Ohio. What what genre are, are they? they? Um, they're a uh, Americana kind of. Oh. Okay. Cool. Do you listen for uh, the music or for lyrics primarily? Um, a little of both. Mm -hmm. I'm big on the vibe. I'm big on like the yeah. feeling that the music gives you. Sure. I'm, I'm big on kind of the music. I'm actually really bad with being able to like understand the lyrics. Mm. It's it's an intonation thing, I think. Me too. I have that problem. <laughs> I have to see them. So yeah, it's it's kind of more just you know, kind of the vibe thing too. How about the rest of you? Favorite musician? Favorite band? Oh. I'm going to see Shaka Khan when we go home. Oh, cool. That's going to be fun. <laughs> oh, my God. It's going to be the time of my life. <laughs> She's going to ask me to go on tour with her. I can feel it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Do the it. kid that brings his baseball mitt to the ball game. Yeah. He's hoping they're going to call him in. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm ready to go. I'm going by myself, and I'm, like, right in the center front. And believe you me, she's going to notice me. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little while ago on the bottom right, we passed a small Victor Gorgia. It's the first I've seen for a while. Mm. Right. Bridge, this is not another move, same step. Yeah, I have a hard time nailing down f particularly favorite artists. I know, kind of like what you said, Christopher. There, I, there are so many different uh, artists that I like in lots of different genres. I could never pick a single one. And also, I, I I mean, there are definitely artists that I can point to that I, I really like it in general, but there are often just a couple songs by particular artists that I really, really like. Yeah. Check out yeah, that that's pillow some fragment. Big fracturing. Yeah, that's wow. cool. Wedgie. Yeah. So Finally getting into some stuff that looks cool. Sample. <laughs> <laughs> that too. That too. <laughs> no more puka crusts. <laughs> I was worried we were going to have an endless uh, landscape of puka crusts here. But nope. Things have changed. A little more yeah, animal. this is pretty chawed up. Yeah. So I have his drop away pretty soon. It okay. Kind of. All this rock talk. Mm -hmm. Slow beans. No, yeah. And also, like, the current actually is pretty strong. Oh, here. really? Yeah. What direction's it feeling? It's coming like from the west. Okay. Yeah. It's interesting. Ah, so we're kind of getting pushed into the wall a little bit. Yeah, so actually, mm, okay. it just like, yeah, it'll just push me pretty quickly off station. Okay, we'll keep that in mind. If it's still like that after waypoint six, we can hop over to the other side. Oh, yeah. 
No worries. Okay. We'll just we'll bake that in for when Argus is getting close to the wall. Oh no, Puka Argus cross. is never going to be close to the wall. <laughs> At Atlanta. <laughs> <laughs> Back over to Swiss cheese. <laughs> yep. Argus, Argus, Argus. <laughs> <laughs> Favorite band. Can we zoom on one of the stocked pearls? Yeah, sure thing. I guess the not unbranching coral. So I've kind of been on like this <laughs> this prog metal kick for a while. Cool. Go ahead and push on in there, please. Did you say frog metal? Prog metal. The only thing better F than prog metal is frog metal. <laughs> yes, exactly. Well, I still didn't catch what you cool, said. Thank you. It looks cool like away, bamboo. Please. Yeah. Bamboo. Uh, Progressive what? metal, P R O G. Pro Prague, Pro I've never heard yeah. of that. Okay, Rod. I, I mean, yeah. I have the whole the sentence, lingo. but now I know why I thought you said Prague. <laughs> yeah. Got it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I knew what metal meant, but <laughs> so it's like hip hop metal, <laughs> frog metal. Get it? Yeah, hip hop metal would be really fun too. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Prague. like there's there's this like like European supergroup, uh, Earthside bunch of guys from a bunch of different prog metal bands that came together and just put together just absolutely cinematic like Ooh. high production Whoa. what was okay. that that was a big wave yeah. that was Is that just the, the control room just shook for the viewers <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty strong but yeah it's, it's, you want to just check in with the bridge no, he doesn't. Rod. <laughs> we, we need to have a vibrate, a vibrate option <laughs> for <laughs> viewers. No. Hi, Fishy. Oops. Yeah. Mr. I think another Halosaur. Yeah. 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 Like Just doing the moonwalk. What's the tension looking like right now? Still 8,000? Yeah, still, still good. Max. Still no more. Oh, but speaking of which, I should do a gauge check. Gotcha. That felt like a 4.0 earthquake. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it hit me from <laughs> underneath, really. Bridge, this is not. Look that windy or heavy. Can we look at this fish right here, too? Sure. Uh, Ooh, that looks a little scarred up, or maybe there's a parasite on it. Another one of these hit while we were in down in Data Lab a little bit ago, um, and oh, yeah. Dwight radioed up to the van and uh, was talking to them about it. And apparently, we're just getting like some waves, where just some wavelengths are kind of adding on top of each other, and it's uh, smacking the boat occasionally. Ah. Give us a look. Turn your face. That has that interesting cuttlefish type or cuttlefin type thing. Is okay, that guys, a I'm going to need to go full way, please. Sure. I wonder where it got the scratches from. Sponge. Let's see. Oh, we're seeing some Any things. Any thoughts on that, Leela? Uh, no, I'm going into the... Me too. Into the depths. Eel-like fishes. Wraith. Or, yeah, eel-like, exactly. Okay, the corals are liking this current. Glad we're starting to see little... Uh, Little clusters of oh no, it's uh, not it's not cloud form. Yeah, it's an interesting little landform here. It's like things just like totally collapsed. A little bit more of a community there on that ledge down here. That's nice to see. Yeah, yeah. Is that a basagigus? Oh, one of the ophidian fish or something back there. Is that a fish or is that a bamboo? Uh, I think that's oh. a bamboo. Raj, Raj, I thought the thing that Justin had pointed out was a fish, and I was like, pretty sure that's a coral. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Lila, I don't know how to tell you this. <laughs> you <laughs> know, we can in high contrast area in anything's game. <laughs> what did you call it, Lila? I think Basagigas. Basagigas, okay, I'll have to check that out. It's in the Ophidid dish. Okay. I'm looking at the uh, Bacididae ones. And Kind of looks like that too. It's in that same. Um, Let's see. That's in the Ophidids, right? Yes. It's, it's it's further down in there. Okay. Oh yeah, the mouth's a little different. What I was looking at. Yeah, those have those kind of gnarly faces. We have folks joining us from 20 different countries this morning or wow. this evening or impressive. Whatever time it is. I don't really know anymore. It's morning somewhere. <laughs> I like that too. Okay, that was a good cool. call. I'm very tempted. It, Leela, is there anything yeah. floaty in the starboard bio bin? Nope. Kylie, when you're done with the gauges, you want to just open it up and see how big it is. See how big it is. Yeah, let's take a look. <laughs> <laughs> and that, I'll, that'll dictate if I drop one or two plates here. Okay. <clears throat> nah. 
Unless the back row wants to see. Yeah, okay, yeah, why not? Oh, okay, all right, that's not bad. It's like big, but it's not the biggest. Okay, <laughs> yeah, we're not like in total Chonkerville territory. Okay, we'll just drop one plate then. Okay. I'm glad you did that because I was like, thank goodness it's not too. a beach ball. I've been <laughs> 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 it's not like the 34-pounder I have, the other 34-pounder I have in the lab. This is now another wolf step step. Yeah, the one you pulled out yesterday was ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody need 34 pounds of hyaloclastite? <laughs> <laughs> Didn't Kylie say that was going to be in her carry-on? Yeah. <laughs> 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 it is okay to repatriate parts of samples a bit early. Yes. So while we're taking care of business, we'll just yeah, say just that the we, one uh, by the slurp there. Actually, I'll wait till they're done. Uh, are you full wide there, Rhett? Yes. Thank you. You can stay the most wide you get. Super yeah. duper wide. Yeah, Super okay. duper. Yeah, sure thing. In. <laughs> put that on for you. <laughs> it's curiosity, eh? But it's it's correct in here too. You can also grab the double stack, it's okay too. That just mean it'll be pretty floaty. Eh, yeah, let's just drop one. Floaty's not the end of the world. We we do have some ground to cover. Yeah. You got it. Yoinks. Alright, let me get you a bit closer so we don't drop it. There's a new home next to this. Say and hello to the Pukas. So if you're wondering what we're doing right now, we're dropping a ballast plate. Okay. Which will help us be Does able to Does that look like a good spot there, Val? Looks good. Roger that. Thank you, thank you. I am free. What is Much that better. Little, what is that little pinky thing right there? That was a sea pen. Oh, sea cucumber. It's kind of funny seeing the sea light from this angle. It's very, very bright. Yes, please. How's the googly eye doing? Another move, same step, please. My only second. Still there. Still there. <laughs> it still looks there a little googling. sad somehow, it though. It looks like the, <laughs> the pupil is detaching. <laughs> yeah, it does. Oh, no. Oh, no. It's, it's, it's because the pupil is within the little dome thing. Oh, oh it's in the dome. Okay. It's definitely contained. Otherwise, we'd be in a lot of trouble. But it looks as though it's kind of splitting within itself. It's probably having an internal debate, yeah. Yeah. It's not going to get free, but it, it doesn't look, he ain't looking quite right. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's, uh, if we shake the vehicle, then maybe it'll reseed itself in a different position. It might googly. <laughs> but you make it very googly. <laughs> oh, I can't say that word. <laughs> googly. Very <laughs> googly. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, I'm sorry. That and was just like that, we're already... Wasn't that a character of the Muppets who yeah. made that sound? 
Hmm? Was it, oh, it was the, the chef in the Muppets. Mm. Oh, yes, we had a chef. One of my favorite Muppets, along with Animal. Animal is great. What uh, music are you listening to right now, Jess? Me? Yeah. Well, right now. Uh, the same things on my Spotify as when I got out of sea. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I like, uh, I like, I like rock or, you know, like the oh, 2000s urchin. alternative rock. Oh, cool. Ooh. Like, uh, like what, like the shins or like, um. Yeah. Or, yeah. Pretty much. Uh, yeah. I guess if you consider urchin. like Weezer and stuff like oh, this. Oh, oh, Weezer's <laughs> great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It is. Um, can we zoom on that urchin? I'm sorry. Yeah. Sorry. No, no worries. I saw this in the guide recently. I'm going to look this up. It's just like we started comparing it to the lasers. They're like, wow, that's big. Go ahead and push on in there, please. It is a big urchin. It's over bed. Hello, gigantic echinoderm. Yeah, you have a lot of two feet. Yeah. You get your bits stable. If you wondered how an urchin walks, <laughs> this is it. Urchin in motion. Yeah? Yeah, there he goes. Yeah, look at those two feet. Look at those little <laughs> legs go. He's running as fast he's as he can. Just, he's just, <laughs> oh, I can barely <laughs> keep up. <laughs> Lila, it looks a lot like the Sparrows Oh, it does look like Sobatini. that. Oh, yeah. You want to drop find. that in the chat? Yeah. My shortcut pace doesn't work for some reason, but I can. <laughs> On the arm? <laughs> Kylie. <laughs> <laughs> Our elephant friend. <laughs> Are you going to Google? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh that's a star. <laughs> oh, yeah. Can you zoom on that? Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> he sounded Ooh. so sad that you didn't get to see it. Like Isn't it kind of funny that we, white. at one point, decided, like, oh, those bright dots in the sky, they must be star-shaped. <laughs> Point. Some people think that might piece. have been because of like astigmatism or other visual problems. Oh. oh. Gives you like glare? Is somebody with astigmatism? I can confirm. Light sources yeah. do glare at, at night. Good. Do you have any sm slightly tighter there? I don't know Ooh. if you've seen oh, this more one. Than slightly. That oh, looks yeah. a lot like the one so we have collected. Yeah. It's yeah. probably yeah. better. Oh, do we need to get a screen grab for you, Christopher? I wouldn't mind. Oh, I'm, I'm grabbing them. We got them. Awesome. Leela saving the day. Right. As there always, you gotta go oh, full way, please. She's all that's my job. Very cool. Keep is that like a slime yes, star please. or something? Please, this is not another yeah, like slime keep star. Calling them. The that's one we have is slimy, can confirm. Yeah, it looks pretty slimy in the lab. That's a good era and group of vans, though, Jess. Yeah. I, I mean, yeah. I like Ooh, anything there's another and there are quite a few of them. Oh, yeah. Ooh, nice. Yeah, good eye. Town. Sponge rubble, you know what that means. Maybe living sponges somewhere. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Probably uphill. Waypoint six. Oh, like the babiest colophagus. Oh, Just wow. the teeniest little stocked sponge. Sorry, you guys are bigger here. I need to get a bit ahead here. But okay. Keep Look. calling them out, and then I will zoom sure. when possible. Looks like we're still sitting in that, s or coming back to that stolonifera coating. Yeah, I wonder what is is it still on? Is that what they were seeing earlier? Uh, I saw it in the chat earlier. Okay. If we okay. zoomed, I guess it could be barnacles, but usually it was looking like it was still on. Okay. I think it adds such a cool element. And now we're back into the small pukas. So there's another far off sponge. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's sediment. Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah. You yeah. Think, Everybody's in it real up there. Just, uh, <laughs> Jess, you think the, Everything's the a sponge. coating on the rock is to sediment? No, no, no. The, the thing on the, the, it looked like a sponge, right. the sponge the that you're talking about is yeah. just oh. sediment. We can zoom on the That's sediment, yeah, sediment coating sediment. sometime <laughs> when you're caught up. How do you see that so far away? It's because it, it's right in front of me, though. I have, I'm, I, you know, like you guys have to look at it from back there, and it's right in front of our faces here. I got a nice sharp big uh, screen here. A slightly less sharp telestrator. Yeah. <laughs> uh, did you guys want to zoom on this uh, on the rock? Yeah, might as well. Step on the see rock. See what it is. I see a sea star. We see quite a few different sea stars. Oh, on there's the a yeah, a really long-armed red one in the corner there. These barnacles. That's what we're here to find out. Oh. Do you want yeah, to turn the porch light, light on? Oh yeah. 
All right, go ahead and push on in there tight, please. Now that we're a bit steadier. Who Whoa. are you barnacles? You are barnacles. Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, he's eating like a hash pit. And oh that's a brachiopod. Gosh, it's a barnacle. Hi, brachiopod. It's like a coffin for the barnacles. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh my god, that is kind of funny. So funny. Zooms on barnacle well, coffin. Please. <laughs> it's a With brachiopod <laughs> overlord. Okay, so Catacombs. the pukas are barnacle graveyards. Right. Got it. Jeez. Wow, yeah, so it's not sediment. They're all barnacle <laughs> graveyards. <Mass> barnacle. <gasps> this is like benthic horror. <laughs> <laughs> Niche genre. There are a lot more urchins, huh? There, I think that's yeah, more than you. there. And wow, there. so many. Wow, we. I wonder if the urchins can prey on these barnacles. I bet yeah, they, they can with that little Aristotle's lantern. Oh, that's a good point. What's an Aristotle's lantern? That is the feeding appendage of an urchin. Oh yeah, Fishy. Ooh, it's a bigger nice. fish down there. If you, um, oh yeah, Reg. If we collect another another one, I can show you. But it has usually like five parts to it, and they're kind of like jaws. Picture like a demogorgon. A little oh bit. my god! Yeah. Five little teeth that all kind of come together at, as a point. So yeah. They sort of what? chew toward the middle. They're like inverted sarlacc pits. Wow. Yeah. Reg, this is not another move. Same step. What are they called again? Aristotle's lanterns. The what? What lanterns? Aristotle. Aristotle lanterns. The feeding part. Of the feeding parts. I of will send. I will send something to like you in the mouth. chat. <laughs> but it's like major crazy teeth kind of thing. Let me see it now. It's a sarlacc. The Are you gonna Google it? You want me to send one to you? Send it. Put it in the chat. Okay. They sure. actually made like a bio-inspired um, set. It's not sediment collector. Kind of. Um, based on the Aristotle's lantern, actually. Really? Yeah, they're, they're prototyping it for some lunar oh, that's missions. That's cool. Wow. Yeah. That is so cool. Yeah, that's pretty neat. Hello. I'm going to send multiple pictures. One of them is going to be sort of what it looks like from the outside, and the other one is if you ever from dissect the inside? one. Well, like, if you were to, you know, dissect a barnacle, or not a barnacle, <laughs> uh, an urchin, they're really, like, intricately interlocking beautiful structures. <gasps> oh, my gosh. Nar. Yeah, isn't that Ooh. so cool? And they're all controlled by water pressure. That looks like, like the like last thing you'll cool. ever see. <laughs> <laughs> Straight out. They don't look is. quite that scary when you're looking at them. But it's okay, so <laughs> this, all the little pieces, like those, that's not all just like one big piece, each of the five. It's, uh, they, they're kind of like interlocking pieces. That's cool. Yeah, that's yeah. really fascinating. That first one you sent, though, you really should have told me it was going to be uh, <laughs> moss terrifying. <laughs> It looks like it has teeth. I'm glad that it's small and I'm big. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now imagine being a barnacle. I try not to. <laughs> <laughs> Can't say I ever have. So you're telling me that urchins are barnacle overlords? Um, I am telling Kenji. you that that brachiopod was the barnacle overlord. <laughs> <laughs> Raj. <laughs> So we had a couple questions. Um, one was a question about why we're not using Argus. Uh, Argus is misbehaving a little bit, having some fruster things that we need to fix when we're back at the dock. So we're using Atalanta, which is basically mini Argus and does just about the same thing in a smaller form factor, but uh, we should have Argus back up and running for our next cruise, I hope. Um, Another question was, have we ever seen Hawaii's national fish, which is, I'm going to try this, humu humu nuku nuku kapua, apua. Apua. Kapua, um, which is a reef trigger fish. Yeah. Uh, we probably wouldn't see it at this depth. The fish down here are usually not very colorful. Um, I think that's oh, probably a surface serious. reef Ow. fish. So we perspective. For, for the fish's sake, I hope Can we don't find one down here. Yeah. Please, please. This is not another move, same step. Related to that, there was a question about with all the fish, billions of fish in the ocean dying, how come we aren't finding like fish skeletons on the bottom here? Probably the ocean is eating. really big. Yeah. And also, as we've seen uh, from those whale fall examples, there are plenty of things that feed on both the flesh and the bones, so... They don't probably stick around very long. Yeah. The bones probably don't all stay together, too. So So many barnacles. Scattered. Yeah, barnacle city here again. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I for, yeah, 
I'm they had like impressed those are all barnacles. Urchin feast. <laughs> so how long you would like us to? Yeah. <laughs> how long you would like to go over this uh, ridge uh, and then start moving towards waypoint six? Um, I think we can start angling toward waypoint six at the next move. Okay. Okay. Roger that. We have a music recommendation in the chat. Uh, Gilliam Desk. They say his Visions album and Storm album are kind of cool. cool. Uses electric hurdy gurdy to make music. Oh, oh what? Whoa. <laughs> Surprise! Oh, hello there. <laughs> I'll take a quick look at this guy real quick. It looks like a gramophone. It, it does. really does. I forgot if these were for a. Uh, let's it see. Might be. Yeah. Can I, I do was not paying attention to the other camera. This guy. He's a neat guy. His base is awesome. Oh yeah. I like the little Smurf noses going up the side of it. Of the <laughs> Smurf stock. noses. Come on, That's yeah. a wonderful what thought. Can we call that part the Smurf nose? Just like on a stegosaur, how its tail's thagomizer. That's it. That's what it's called. That's really what it's called. Interesting. Thanks to the uh, far side comic. It's like the heat, heat miser's cousin. <laughs> <laughs> it, doesn't, it doesn't have that same like spine backbone look to it as the frids, don't you think? Otherwise, it does really look. It's beautiful similar. and gigantic. Yeah, it's beautiful. All right, Boyd. Come behind again. You can see all the the oscula little holes where the water yeah. comes out. It's like that egg carton sort of look. texture. Yeah. yeah. We are look at number uh, 14014. In the Euplectellus? No, in the, in the Friday, sorry, yeah. yeah. Jess, what were you saying that they're mimicking the urchin mouths to do? It was like some sediment yeah, sample. That seems, seems cool. pretty right. Yeah. So next we'll be moving 180. 180, roger that. Um, one sec, let me get a bit ahead. Raj. I put a link to Once the... Once we complete this move, 10 meters remaining. Roger that. Put a thagomizer link in the chat, Kylie. Uh, Ooh, chat, chat. Love yeah. that. So, it has its own Wikipedia page. I tried to send it, but... I can't click that. I don't have access. I only have access to your screen. Ah. Raj. I can we'll Google we'll it though. Now that later. I've seen yes. it written down, yes, I, I do can do that. Okay, Kelly, you want to come up on the oh, winch? Oh, it did come through. Good. Say it. Oh, just about the winch. Yeah, we're right about more sponges uphill. Yeah, you're really coming up a lot faster now that that plate's gone. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> very snappy now. Craig, this is nav. Next move, one eight zero, thirty meters. Yes, please. Sorry guys, I just need to get back out in front of our er, Atlanta. And then, Thank uh, you. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, I'll get better visual contact with the ground. Sorry, got a little behind the sponge. Oh, no apology needed. All good. Roger There's that. a lot of marine snow. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder how many other expressions I can come up with to like compare the Argus Atlanta relationship like uh you know <laughs> argus 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 like marcia right but then like always a argus never atalanta like always a, <laughs> always a bridesmaid never a bride <laughs> do we always have atalanta on board no nope. not always but i mean maybe this season it will it was on last trip right and i think now that we're working out of honolulu it might just stay around how about the little hercules same same deal. They're like a package. Yeah. But you know, if they need a deck space for something, they'd probably put them in storage if they didn't. But they're, they're like, you know, hot spares sort of in a sense. You know? Someone's commenting that they think it's really neat that every time we go down, we're seeing something no one has ever seen before. Oh, totally. Yeah. Agreed. I think that's that neat, too. That is, like, why I'm here. Could we zoom on the 
a white fan to the left. White fan to the left, Raj. Uh, getting back into that tricky ID, huh? Yeah. Is it enlepsemia? Is it the Kelly eye? Is it, you know? Is the is porch it, light on? Is it <laughs> a white <laughs> variation That's good. of hemicrylium? Is it bendy or is it brittle? Is it bendy or... Yeah. Right, go ahead and push on in there. Oh, that's good. Asako's back with us, so she yes, can help she us is. out, too. All right, we have okay, all Asako, sorts of Okay, Asako, analepsemia or the, the Kelly eye. What is this little thing right here? Uh, oh. Oh, what are you? Shadow cops? Hollow three? What is it? That worm No, thing? it looks like a weird... Uh, I can zoom with this. Arthropod of some kind. You want to push in tight there on center screen? That's what you're talking about? Yeah, yeah. wait, what Big is thing. it? Is it a is that full zoom? bivalve? No. Oh, I look at further. the bubble cam. Go ahead. Yeah. That mm. is a strange crustacean. I'm going to do one bump left, or bump right, I mean. Watch. One of the oh, more you, no. you can see some like t antennae or something there. Yeah, the, 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 the tail right. portion Please. looks very. Break this is now another move, 30 meters. Arthropod. South. Uh, I have no clue at all. Coming up. Roger. A, a sock will say maybe it's a kind of blind lobster, which I've also never heard of. Let me. Strange Let me decapod. Yeah, it almost looks kind of like the like Rhymacaris shrimp that are at vents. <laughs> I'm putting the iris on auto for a second because I got to do a system health check. Okay. Sure thing. It does kind of look like. Man, I am liking these rocks here. Huh. Gotta wait till we get ahead. I know. Like them, um, like them, oh like them up top. <laughs> a polychelid. Um, is oh, that, that looks a very similar. All right, um, I'm keeping an eye out for uh, Beth Rock. Roger. So, as pretty as these rocks are, ooh, look at this. Wow. Um, not quite what we need yet. Beautiful sponge. Mm -hmm. Wow, there's stuff. This is so <laughs> exciting. There's so much stuff in the water, too. See, I thought we were going to see this stuff like a couple hundred meters ago. And like polychaetes are blind lobsters. Asako called it. Asako called it. We have a question. Uh, what capability does Argus have that Atalanta doesn't? What It has better lighting. Okay, turning off Ida. Reg. Um, the camera is the same this is actually a spare camera it's not the one we usually use but it's the same the sonar is the same the usb is yeah, the same could you DVL reset, please? it has a sub bottom profiler on argus Next time we have a second can we zoom on one of the white fans yeah sure thing the atalanta does not Thank and you. um off the top of my head that's all i can think of i haven't touched argus in i don't know almost a month so I can't necessarily remember the other stuff. I think that was a good summary. Yeah, they're pretty much the same. But like you said, smaller form factor. Well, you want to push on in there, please? All right, full wide. <coughs> Sorry, I'm just like still making You're my good. way. We're still around. booking it. It's tricky to get a good look at these like pure white corals. It is. Yeah. Especially because they have those kind of nearly transparent polyps on them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. I'm trying it's to. Kind of hard to get the focus. Yeah, I'm trying to hit it just right to get those, but it, it takes a second. Yeah, that's tricky. Oh, hello, wall. Whoa. Yeah. Whoa. yeah. Cool, Walteria. <laughs> that is yes, a live Walteria. Walteria. It's a gonzo nose oh, I Walteria. I love it. With brittle stars? Looks yeah, like looks it. Like, it. like it. Bunch of associates. That's really big. It's probably what, just under a meter, there, please. Maybe more. That's like great. That. Oh, I love that. Can I drop the lasers? Ooh, Ooh, it has look at the threads. Smooth coming off of it. Wow. Yeah. So I like it. And then the shrimps the shrimp. that are trapped inside. 
<laughs> squat and a squat. Monster. Yeah. Oh yeah. So cool. It must capture a lot of extra stuff with those. Oh my gosh. And a Chrysogorgia behind it. Yeah. You want to go in a little tighter? And our little squat lobster at the base. Ooh, look at that structure. I mean, nature, yeah. go yeah. off. <laughs> and a squat lobster. Be a little extra there. Great, Do I see like filaments coming flying. off the bottom of it yeah. there? Yeah, yeah, see. Yeah. Push, 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 yeah. Another move, same step. I I'm I assuming please. it would help it collect a little Ooh. bit more food. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. That is so wild. It that is, is just an assumption. All right, got to go again. But we'll take a quick peek. This is the this is the style of Starid that that was one of the things we had previously thought was something that looked like that. It looks really similar, but that's the one named after Chris. Yeah, yeah. Chris, <laughs> what are you gonna do to make a make a highlight of four? <laughs> I guess just ask for it. <laughs> no, I was I meant I really meant I I was really curious. <laughs> like I don't know what the what the rating. Um, a hierarchy like what qualifies i mean i could i yeah. could guess a five like the octopus would be a five right right so basically three is hey this is pretty cool four is we should probably make this like in a public video at some point and five is like we should make it in a video in five minutes and oh <laughs> okay okay like, super cool now so thank you for wow. explaining that. that that's sort of the basic five is everyone on the internet will see this yeah yeah yeah. Cool. Thank you for explaining. Did you guys see that Nautilus push notification? No. No. Ooh, ooh. Big I, sponge. I mentioned nice it to sponge. I mentioned it to one or two of you Satellite before we dish. came up here. What was uh, it? Actually, I need to go. Oh, you Sorry. can't tell us. Can you show us? Oh, that. that Headless yeah. chicken monster ast astound scientist by Nautilus Live. Oh yeah, you were astound? saying that. Yes. I wasn't sure. I didn't understand. Wait, what? Tell me more. Yeah, what? Tell us more. <laughs> um, I haven't watched it, but I believe that's oh one no. of the new Nautilus oh, highlight there videos. There we go, another little fish for us. How did we miss that? Uh, that? I just got to push the seed there. What is that? Uh, Do you guys, and I'm cured. pretty out that's of okay, time you can again. Keep going. That's fine. If you guys want to zoom in on more things, we can slow the ship. Uh, it's just with the with the clip with like these steeper terrains. Uh, 0.3 really feels more like 0.5. Ooh, okay. Sponge coming up. Metallogorgia. Yeah. There's like not that much happening, but there is decent diversity. Yeah. yeah. Another sea star tucked in a little divot down there. Mm. It's one of the red ones. I'm not objecting to making up uh, a little bit of ground it, uh, as well. So. Okay. Yeah. As long as you guys don't mind that, then we'll snap zoom on things and then just run ahead and then snap zoom. <laughs> you know okay. what I mean? Halosaur yeah, there. Good. No need to stop. Just pointing it out. Sure thing. I like this view. We had a question about what kind of pressures we're talking about. Um, every 10 meters, you increase by one atmospheric pressure. So we're at 1,230 meters, which means we're at about 123 times uh, the pressure in the air at sea level. I don't know how many newtons that is, but it's a lot. That is a lot, yeah. We didn't see the headless chicken monster on our watch. There's no, no way. No, no we didn't. it was on the watch before ours. I was like, okay. I've forgotten some scientific things before. Was that on this dive though? That's what they're they're highlighting it just now. Yeah. There was a. I mean, there was a. No, that was yesterday. I, I saw like one. Something we there was like a, a dancing. Ago.